Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Crookston Sports Center. We have more hockey on hand as right now it is going to be the Crookston Pirates boys taking on the War Road Warriors. As uh, you just saw a few moments ago, the Crookston Pirates girls varsity team, they picked up a 4-1 to one win over East Grand Forks. But now it's time for the boys, and it's the number two War Road Warriors on the road taking on the Crookston Pirates. Good evening, everyone. I'm Tyler Herger. Joining me later on in the Riverview Health pregame show will be Bo Melby. As uh, Let's take a look at both of these teams. Last year, the Pirates and the Warriors, they only played one time. It was a 7 to nothing win for War Road, and that one took place in War Road. So the number two Warriors, they come into this one 12-3 and three on the season, but they are coming off of an overtime loss to Rozo on Tuesday. Uh, they, uh, they lost there, and uh, they had won four in a row before that loss on Tuesday. On the other side, for the Crookston Pirates, they come in to this one 7-5 and five on the season, and they just had a 5-1 to one road victory against Bagley Boston as they had three power play goals, including a 5-on-3 power play goal as well. As the Pirates, they scored five goals exactly for the for the third time in a game this season. And that was their first road win since their first game of the season, which took place against Kitson County Central. So uh, we will uh, continue the Riverview Health pregame show. We're going to take a quick break. And then when we come back, we are going to hear from the head coach of the War Road Warriors, Coach Jay Hardwick, his thoughts on the Warriors as they come into this one against the Pirates. So we'll step aside, take a break, and when we come back, we're going to hear from Coach Hardwick after this on KROX. Farming today doesn't always feel the same way it used to. Then again, some of it feels all the same. Maybe it isn't so much the jobs that changed, but how they get done. Now that's a different story. Efficiencies are critical, which is why you need a lender who will find the right loan structure for a strong financial future. You need a lender to look out for your whole ag country. For all of your automotive service needs, call Christian Brothers Ford here in Crookston. We have a service team to handle all of your vehicle's needs. Does your vehicle pull to the right or left? Call and schedule an alignment today. Proper alignment saves gas and wear on your tires. We're here to take care of your vehicle repairs and maintenance. Call Christopher or Jersey in the service department at 281-1338. Make an appointment today with the service department at Christian Brothers Ford of Crookston, where we make it easy. We continue the Riverview Health pregame show on KROX with the head coach of the War Road Warriors, Coach Jay Hardwick. And Coach, uh, you're coming off a 3-2 overtime loss to Rozo. Uh, what were your thoughts on your team's performance? You know, I, I thought we needed to be better defensively. Um, I thought we were a little loose, uh, gave them too many chances, uh, too many odd-numbered rushes. Uh, and then, you know, I, I give Rozo credit. They played a smart, simple uh, defensive game. and. Uh, you know, they found a way when they did have get chances, they found a way to score. So, uh, you know, it was maybe a combination of how they played and, you know, how we played that uh, I wasn't real happy with it, but uh, that happens sometimes. What do you know about this year's Crookston squad? Well, you know, they're much improved. Uh, you know, they, they, I think I know they're going to work hard. They work hard every year when we play them, no matter what, uh, no matter what the record is. And uh, Josh always has them ready to play. And uh, I expect, uh, you know, more of the same this year. They're going to be very good uh, structurally, and they're going to battle. And uh, we're going to have to be ready for them. How's the health of your team? Uh, it's been good this year. Uh, you know, nothing major. Uh, a couple kids early on in the year that, you know, uh, football injuries and stuff like that, but nothing uh, so far uh, hockey-wise. Do you have two to three keys to pick up a road win tonight? Yeah, I think, you know, we just need to be smart and simple um, and try not to do too much. And then, uh, you know, when we get chances, we got to make them count. 
Thank you very much, Coach. Best of luck tonight. Thank you. So that was the head coach of the War Road Warriors, Coach Hardwick, talking about his squad as they're coming off of that 3-2 overtime loss, and he'll be looking for uh, what he was calling. It was a disappointing performance, he said, about War Road uh, before. So now he's hoping that it will be a better performance tonight. And the Pirates, they're looking to build on a win the other night. It was a road win the other night. They're looking to get a home win tonight. We're going to hear from the head coach of the Pirates, Coach Josh Hardy, on the other side of this one-minute break. This is my farm. Don't come out here and tell me what I need. I need solutions that work and market options that are worth my time. Small town support that sees the bigger picture. A global network that empowers us. A co-op that's there for us every day. Ever wonder what your city government does for you? They provide police and fire protection, emergency and disaster preparation, building code and zoning enforcement, street repair, cleaning and snow plowing, curbside garbage and recycling collection, plus spring and fall cleanup weeks. They deliver safe drinking water and maintain a wastewater system. They care for 22 parks and provide year-round recreation activities. They give loans for economic development and housing. They do all this and much more with the help of your city employees. We continue the Riverview Health pregame show here on KROX with the head coach of the Crooks and Pirates, Coach Josh Hardy. And Coach, coming off of a 5-1 win where you guys were able to get three power play goals as well. Uh, what were your overall thoughts on your team's performance the other night against Bagley Faustin? Yeah, you know, it was a slow start for us. Um, it, it, we, we can't have that. It's been kind of our MO lately. Is you know, it, And it's weird. Like I said, I think on the post game that we, we really come out at practice well at the beginning of practice. So it's weird that we, we don't necessarily quite show up until eight, nine minutes into the first. But, um, you know, hopefully uh, tonight we're, we show up a little bit better here at the start uh, because we got a big one with Waro. But, no, it was a good game. I mean, we I thought their goalie played really well. We didn't have a ton of uh, as many goals as probably we would have liked. But uh, we had a good game. Obviously, getting three power play goals is big. Makes us feel a little bit better about that. And then uh, practice yesterday, how did that go? Yeah, like I said, we were good again. Uh, this is a really fun group. I, I you know, I maybe had uh, more fun at practice than I have in the last couple of years because they just, they, they have a good time. They, they're, they're a treat to be around, and they work really hard. So we had a good practice yesterday, practice some things that we have to do t tonight against a, a, a top-ranked team like War Road, and we're going to come out here tonight and see if we can, uh, we can execute. Uh, what do you know about this War Road team? I mean, Ryan Pilgrim's arguably one of the best players in the state. Uh, he's been uh, potentially in the U.S. He's he's really good. Um, so we got to be aware when he's on the ice. We're going to obviously at the home team. We get the last change. We're going to try to match a little bit tonight. Um, but they're they're not just Pilgrim. Murray Marvin Cordes says some of the best hands that I've ever seen. He's a that whole line goes. Uh, uh, the James kid on there too. He can score at will. So their their top line's really good. And then you throw in uh, their top defenseman and Ryan Lund is is playing like 36 minutes a game, which is outrageous. I, I asked their coach how he's doing it, um, but they, the guy plays a ton and, and he's one of the best defensemen in the state too, so uh, as only a junior. So it's, uh, they're, they're high-end talent, right? So I think that depth-wise, we're, we're, we're similar maybe on that third and fourth line area, but uh, we gotta be able to handle that top line. We gotta weather the storm, and when we get opportunities to score, we gotta be opportunistic. Uh, you played a really ga good game against Thief River Falls uh, the other a couple of weeks ago, where uh, you know you probably went in there being you know an underdog. It was a ranked opponent. You have a ranked opponent, but this time it's at home. Any difference? Yeah, I mean, obviously getting the I didn't really worry about change against Thief River Falls. I think uh, you know, whereas tonight that's going to be at the forefront of my mind is hey, who's going out against uh, uh, Pilgrim's line? So. It's, uh, that, that changes the dynamic a little bit. You'll likely see the, the Carter, Trudeau, Caden Edwards, Ryan Street line quite a bit more tonight just because I think they're, they're one of our better defensive lines. Uh, so they'll be out there against them. And, uh, you know, it's just a, it's a good opportunity for us to, to again, learn about how to play a, uh, against a top-ranked team. We got uh, matches against four, I think, four more games against this year, uh, this year against top-ranked teams with, D with uh, Little Falls, Hibbing, East Grand Forks. So, a, a good learning opportunity for us and games like this get us ready for the playoffs. How's the health of your team? Everybody's feeling good, right? Knock on wood. It's been uh, it's been really good. You have two to three keys to getting a home win tonight? 
Yeah, I mean, we got to be opportunistic. Um, we got to find ways to get pucks to the net. We we talked about that in the locker room. Is that any opportunity that we get, we just got to put it on net and see what happens, right? Uh, you're not going to get a ton of opportunities. You're not going to get a ton of zone time. And um, you know, for us, that that's huge. So we got to uh, we got to stay out of the penalty box. Their 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 power play is lethal. And to be honest, I I don't, I don't really want them to take too many penalties either because they I think they got nine shorthanded goals so far in the year. They're uh, they're dangerous there too. So uh, it's going to be a we're going to have to weather the storm tonight and uh, hopefully be opportunistic and as we head into the third period the goal is to, to find ourselves in a hockey game and if we can do that it'll be a it'll be a successful night thank you very much coach best of luck tonight thank you so that was the head coach of the Crookston Pirates coach Josh Hardy with his thoughts as the Pirates it's been a little bit since they've been at home it's their first home game since December 21st that was a 5-0 loss to Thief River Falls and they're looking for their first home win since the Lions Cup when they defeated St. Paul Johnson. That was a while ago. So we were going to step aside once again. We'll take another break, and when we come back, we will continue our Riverview Health pregame show here on KROX. Hi, I'm Dr. Angie Smith, optometrist at the Crookston Eye Clinic and Foston Eye Clinic. We aim to provide high quality products to our patients, things that we use ourselves in treating our own dry eye or coatings that we like to use on our own glasses. We offer myopia control contact lenses for children, which are soft contacts that not only correct their vision, but are designed to slow the progression of their nearsightedness. The eyes lead the body and we are passionate about helping the eyes be safer, sharper and faster. Crookston High School, we really have a lot going on. There isn't that much going on. Oh yeah? We have softball, baseball, track and field, soccer, swimming, tennis, golf, volleyball, crap shooting, hockey, basketball, wrestling. So we have a lot of sports. And there is orchestra, band, choir, visual arts, speech, theater, video club. And Crookston is one of the highest academic schools in the region. Really? Yeah, really, especially in math and science. I guess we do have a lot of going on. Yeah, and that's why Crookston High School is my, my education, education destination. destination. Crookston Valley Cooperative in Crookston is your full-service local agronomy dealer delivering the products and services that you've come to expect. Crookston Valley Cooperative specializes in seed, chemical, and fertilizers that you need to keep your farm operation growing. For expert advice you can rely on, give Sean, Mike, or Matt a call at 281-1178 today or stop by at Crookston Valley Cooperative located at 1122 Fairfax Avenue in Crookston. Crookston Valley Co-op, here to keep you growing. With the fall season right around the corner, Grove Mechanical in Crookston is ready to prepare you for winter. They suggest having your heating system serviced regularly to keep things running smoothly. A skilled technician will clean and service your heating equipment to ensure safe and efficient operation. It's never too early to get ready for the upcoming winter season. Before the cold sets in, call Grove Mechanical today, your hometown heating and cooling professionals. Give them a call, 218-281-3863, or visit their website, grovemech.com. Shopping for groceries is easier than ever with Hugo's Family Marketplace. To simplify life, Hugo's offers convenient online shopping with delivery or curbside pickup at GoHugos.com. Even better, shop on the go with the Hugo's Family Marketplace smartphone app. Download e-coupons, recipes, grocery lists, weekly ads, and place your grocery order right from your phone. Save time and save big with Hugo's Family Marketplace, your hometown grocer since 1939. You're gonna find more low prices, more great stuff when you go to Hugo's. Are you an enthusiastic sports fan? Want to have fun and get in on the action? Heck yes, that'd be awesome. Have great attention to detail? Want to stay active? Definitely. Want to give back to the student athletes in your community? Obviously, yes. Then you'd make an excellent high school sports official. We need more officials in Minnesota because with no high school officials, there are no high school sports. Sign up today at highschoolofficials.com. From shoulder to hand, hips to toes, and everything in between, the Riverview Health Orthopedic Team has you covered with advanced training and joint replacements, upper and lower extremity, spine, foot, and ankle care. You know with Dr. Spinell, Shaw, Secundiac, Stanky, Kim, and Abasi. For appointments, call Riverview Clinic at 218-281-9595. Riverview Health, exceptional people, exceptional care. Riverview.
Welcome back to the Crookston Sports Center as we'll take a look at our Draft Sports Bar and Grill scoreboard update. Draft Sports Bar and Grill has a great menu that includes salads, appetizers, entrees, sandwiches, wraps, tacos, pasta, burgers, and desserts. Takeouts and catering are also available, and they have a room that's available for parties and special celebrations. Contact them at 281-1183 as they are open Tuesday through Sunday at 11, and the lunch specials, they are served from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., and the lunch specials, they change weekly. They also have nightly specials. as on this Thursday night. It is taco night from 5 to 9 p.m. It is a taco for $2.50. So on our Draft Sports Bar and Grill scoreboard update, a, a few moments ago, it was the Crookston Pirates varsity team uh, the girls team they were able to get a four to one victory over east grand forks we had that here on our krox youtube stream other hockey scores from around the area moorhead they're taking on bemidji in girls hockey it's one nothing moorhead over bemidji in the third as we take a look see if there's anything going on on the boys side nothing in our area for hockey as let's take a look at the boys basketball scene and see if there are any scores from our area nothing really going on and uh, we do have boys basketball on our the radio side as it's going to be the uh, crooks and pirates they are taking on the holly nuggets as uh, that one is scheduled to tip off momentarily as let's see sock center they are leading barnesville in uh, girls hoops 52 to 30 in the second and that really is about it on the high school sports scene. It is a Hockey Fights Cancer Night here at the Crookston Sports Center as the Pirates wearing their purple sweaters. Uh, both Pirates teams had their purple sweaters on and they also, a lot of the uh, players, they have uh, purple stick tape as well. So you'll see that throughout the game. We will take a look at our Napa Crookston welding and machine starting lineups. As for all your automotive needs, stop by Napa Crookston Welding a Machine in Crookston as they have what you need. And make sure your battery will start the first time every time. Buy a Legend Battery from Napa Crookston Welding and Machine. They handle all your Legend Battery needs for your cars, trucks, recreational vehicles, snowmobiles, and ATVs. And now here's the Napa Crookston Welding and Machine starting lineups. Top line for the Pirates will be Carter Trudeau, Caden Edwards, and Ryan Street. The defensive, top defensive pairing for the Pirates will be Tegan Lubinsky and Tate Hamry. On the other side for War Road, their top line will consist of Carson Pilgrim at center. It'll be left wing of Taven James and right wing Murray Marvin Cordes. On the defense, it'll be Ryan Lund and Will Hardwick. And the netminder for War Road will be Benjamin Norris. That is the Napa Crookston welding and machine starting lineups. So we will step aside. We will take a break. We'll do the national anthem. And then when we come back, we're going to have puck drop between the number two War Road Warriors and the Crookston Pirates here on KROX. It's always growing season here at United Valley Bank. We're focused on growth for our customers and communities, success for farms and businesses, and improvement for ourselves. Partner with us and you'll see firsthand just how much the right hometown banking team can change your perspective. Together, there's no limit to the heights we can reach. United Valley Bank, our roots make us stronger. Member FDIC, an equal housing lender. Hello, this is Lindsay Erdman, Executive Director at Benedictine Living Community Crookston. Over the years, we have seized the opportunity to make changes and improve the services that we offer. Healthcare has taken on a very distinct evolution, focusing on post-acute short stay and return to home. It is our privilege to continue to serve our community with continuum of care ranging from assisted living, memory care, post-acute short stay, and extended care. We are so grateful for the support of Crookston and the surrounding communities. In this season of giving and reflection, please know how very proud Benedictine Living Community of Crookston is to serve our community. Farming today doesn't always feel the same way it used to. Then again, some of it feels all the same. Maybe it isn't so much the jobs that changed, but how they get done. Now that's a different story. Efficiencies are critical, which is why you need a lender who will find the right loan structure for a strong financial future. 
You need a lender to look out for your whole farm operation. Ag Country. For all of your automotive service needs, call Christian Brothers Ford here in Crookston. We have a service team to handle all of your vehicle's needs. Does your vehicle pull to the right or left? Call and schedule an alignment today. Proper alignment saves gas and wear on your tires. We're here to take care of your vehicle repairs and maintenance. Call Christopher or Jersey in the service department at 281-1338. Make an appointment today with the service department at Christian Brothers Ford of Crookston, where we make it easy. This is my farm. Don't come out here and tell me what I need. I need solutions that work and market options that are worth my time. Small town support that sees the bigger picture. A global network that empowers us. A co-op that's there for us every day. Ever wonder what your city government does for you? They provide police and fire protection, emergency and disaster preparation, building code and zoning enforcement, street repair, cleaning and snow plowing, curbside garbage and recycling collection, plus spring and fall cleanup weeks. They deliver safe drinking water and maintain a wastewater system. They care for 22 parks and provide year-round recreation activities. They give loans for economic development and housing. They do all this and much more with the help of your city employees. Welcome back to the Crookston Sports Center. Both teams just about ready to go here as the Pirates there surrounding their net. War Road is doing the same as well. Let's bring in Bo, Mel Bo Melby for the first time tonight. Bo, it's uh, good to hear you. You're on uh, double duty tonight. Just saw the girls get a 4-1 win. Now it's uh, the Pirate boys. How do they keep up that momentum that they had from Tuesday night? You know, big thing is is just you know keep the fundamentals. They really that's what they really excelled in on on uh, earlier this week on. Tuesday and just you know you just got to make sure you're playing with uh, just you know smart this is a very tough team and they're gonna take advantage of any mistake you make so just try to limit those and and you know just know that it's already a pretty up uh, pretty tall uphill battle so just do whatever you can make make the most of it and and uh, it's a great night again for hockey fights and uh, cancer and a great crowd so the barn should be rocking and looking forward to a good one here. Would an early goal really set the tone? Oh, yeah, of course it would. I mean, uh, if you can get a lead against this world team, that would really get them on their heels a bit. I mean, I don't know how many times they've even trailed in this uh, this season. They're they're one of the, again the top teams in the state, uh, favorite to get down back down to the state tournament. And so uh, again, the the task is tall for the Pirates. We'll see if they are up for it. War Road, they'll host Hockey Day in Minnesota later on this month. It's Hockey Night in Crookston tonight as the boys are underway as War Road, they'll win the faceoff. It was Carson Pilgrim who was able to win it there. Now on the near side, losing the puck where the Warriors, it goes back for Hamry. He'll try and send it forward and Hamry, he'll head up ice with it and he'll run into Murray Marvin Cordes and now here's Pilgrim on the fly with it going towards his own end. He'll drop it off for Lund. On up ahead gets this now Trudeau. He'll send it in, and the Pirates make a quick change. Just 25 seconds into this one, Edwards try, tried to steal it, but he was unable to come up with it. Now on the near side, it'll be Ecker. Tried to backhand one along. It got caught up in traffic. Now to the back for Hamry. He'll send it around. Too far for Edwards. And chipping in will be Benson. Benson tried to send it further, but now it's Pilgrim. Pilgrim up ahead, full head of steam, and coming right off the bench was Jay Reese. Made a nice play to jar it loose. It'll be Ecker tried to flop one along, intercepted by James. And it'll get flopped back for Will Hardwick, who'll turn and spin it in. It goes as far as Benson. Battle for it on the near side. Benson, now it's Reese up ahead. He's trying to get it to Fisher, couldn't get it to him. War Road able to spin it back out to center, and puck is loose. Jay Reese couldn't get to it. It is Broden 
Hantvit, who was able to get to it first, and the Warriors send it in deep. Battle for it on the far boards, and the puck is going to come all the way back down. No icing as refs waved it off, and the Warriors will retreat. Here's Hantvit up ahead, looking for Ryan Shogaby. Goes too far, and it's hammering. He'll spin it out of their own end. And a shot on goal as Kelly, he was able to fight it off. That one came from just outside the blue line. Now it'll be Lipinski. He had a two-goal performance the other night. Fired one just wide. Big hit in the corner as now it'll be the Warriors coming up with it as Anthony sends it along. It'll be Lipinski at center. Sent it down. Pirates will go in. It's the third line out there for the Pirates. Jackson Reese, Liam Larson, and Lucas Miller. This one flopped along, and now it's Kyler Lean. Hamry able to backhand it out. So here's Peyton Sunderland. Big collision, three different Pirates in on the collision as they'll just send it back down and make a change. Both teams able to make a change as two and a half minutes into this one, still scoreless, no shots on goal registered yet. Parker Kelly has seen action once, haven't had to call Benjamin Norris's name yet as the Warriors out in front. Nothing able to go there, and now it comes to the back. There's a shot and a save made by Kelly. He'll hang on to it. That will be the first shot on goal registered by either side, and we'll see a face-off to Kelly's right. Well, the Pirates did a good job so far in this period of uh, not letting Warhol get set up. It's been a lot of back-forth action, and... And uh, this is when uh, World can be dangerous. When they're in the offensive zone, they can get set up. They can go cross ice and really get you moving east-west. Quickly off the faceoff, it'll be Kelly who will snatch it out of the air. James was trying to do some work. And it would be snatched up by Kelly, so they'll do it again to his right. Pirates make a change as the defensive pairing of Ty Larson and Riley Benson skate off. Now here's Pilgrim. It's to his spot and scores! Carson Pilgrim scores, and it's 1-0 War Road. Yeah, it looks like a shot that was just uh, some, some players out front. Uh, Parker Kelly, I don't even know if he even really saw that. Just, uh, I mean, Pilgrim's got that hard of a shot. Can't be too surprised there. At 1-0 War Road up early. Carson Pilgrim committed to UND. That's where he will be playing his hockey. He's in the... Face off circle, but it's Caden Edwards who's able to win the draw. Now comes out for Hardwick, and he'll be hit there. And now it's Hammer going the other way, sends it along, tries to get to get it to Edwards. He's able to do so. Edwards backhands it out in front. Hamry was there, but wasn't able to get a stick on it. Now it'll be racing the other way. It's Marvin Cordes. Puts the brakes on, and it would have been a delayed offside. Everyone had to touch up, and now it's Street. Street will play it along, but it goes to Pilgrim. Still battling for it on the near side, and Lund will turn and spin and fire it out. Lipinski backhands this along, and it only goes as far as James. James sends it to the far side, now into the middle. Marvin Cordes, and he tried to cut to the middle, and it was a good stick from Jay Reese to knock it loose. Now it's Pilgrim in the corner. Pilgrim, he'll hold, flops one across, gets it to James, now to the back. Well, send it across for Lund. Lund winds up and a save made by Kelly. Kelly will get it out and now Jay Reese sends it across and able to chase this one down is Ecker. He'll take the hit and it will be Fisher on the far side in the corner trying to send this along for Reese. Jay Reese is there behind the cage and he'll lose it as a couple of, couple of Warriors were able to jar it free. And it'll go out for Marvin Cordes. Up ahead for Wyatt Henham. His shot blocked off into the corner. He'll turn and send it upwards, and now Pirates can't get it out of their own end. And a good defensive play there from Benson as he was able to knock it away. He'll scoop it up, trying to twirl it behind his own cage, and he'll send it back. Now Jay Reese is there. As they still battle for it, a good play from Henham to keep it alive and send it along for Shogaby. Shogaby will head to the back, trying to send one across. And he's able to find Anthony. His shot was blocked. And another shot. That one went high and wide. It'll go all the way down. And Sam Hard will have to come all the way back to his own end below the goal line to retrieve it. 
Here's Lubinsky. Looking for Larson. Now heads back to Lubinsky and he'll head up Weiss with it. Lubinsky hit there and lost the puck. He'll go around to the far side for Miller. Miller in the far corner, backhands one along. It skips off of Jackson Reese. Larson trying to come in for the Pirates. Sends it along for Lucas Miller into the corner and now it's Larson. Larson behind the net. He'll work with it there, sends it to the back. Lubinsky tried to chip it for Jackson Reese. It bounced off his stick. Now it'll be Warroad just flipping it down with Anthony and they'll make a change. Now it's Hamry heading up ice. Still using his speed as Hamry able to get into the corner and now below the net as Jackson Reese is there. Pirates still fighting for it in the corner. It gets sent to the middle, but it's turned over as Sunderland has it. Sends it for Damon Scapel. Scapel's shot, that's saved by Kelly. And this one's gonna be sent over the head of Kelly. It rides on the boards and he'll get out of the zone. And now it's Trudeau, he'll send it in. Blake Melsha into the corner. It'll be met there by Hauntvit. And this will get sent down and out by Warroad and it will not be an icing. Refs wave it off and now it's Benson. And it's a turnover and Pilgrim into the middle. A shot and a save made by Kelly. Big save as Pilgrim was out in front with a great opportunity. Warroad still with possession. Marvin Cordes a shot. That's saved by Kelly. Pirates can't bash it out. Here's Lund. Tried to send it back, able to hold it in. A good stick there from Grappentine as he was able to keep it in for the Warriors as they go to work in the far corner. Marvin Cordes, and this will get sent down. And no icing as this is going to be played by Norris for the first time tonight. So the Pirates able to make a change. Five shots on goal for Warroad, none for the Pirates thus far. Here as we are just past seven minutes into this one, it's one to nothing. Pilgrim was able to score as quickly the other way. It's the Pirates with the chance and... Unable to get the shot off was Fisher. Still bow for in the corner. Now Jay Reese is going to be knocked down. It'll be Lund who picks up the loose puck. He'll reverse it to the far side. Now long cross ice pass finds James. James trying to go one on one. Good defense from Lubinsky. Able to shield himself away from the puck as Larson. He'll scoop it up. Sends it all the way down. And that will be icing. 9.09 left here in this first period. Still 1-0 Warroad, but Parker Kelly with a couple of big saves early. I mean, uh, <laughs> that was a huge one against uh, Carson Pilgrim. That's the guy, one of the few guys, they have a couple, but that's the one you really don't want to be left alone on a turnover there. Uh, I mean, he can definitely burn you, but uh, Kelly comes up big and keeps this 1-0. Off the draw, it'll be Anthony trying to turn and spin one around. Another save made by Kelly. Now it's Henham, puts the brakes on, tries to reverse. Now he'll go to the far side, gets it to Shogaby. He'll send it down past Henham. It'll be Anthony in the corner. Anthony is there, harassed by Miller, and this is going to go down and out. Icing waved off as Miller gets on his horse, trying to outrace hard, but it's hard who's able to get it there and leave it. Now sent along, and this will go to Benson. Benson up ice, Miller will... Touch it up and send it down as the Pirates make a change. So do Warroad. Hardwick. Sits it over for Hauntvit. Up ahead. Tried to play it to Anthony. Bounced off his stick. It's Lubinsky who will chip it along and gets it to Street who will send it further. Top line for the Pirates is out there. Grappentine sent it down. It goes to Lubinsky. Lubinsky's going to be harassed there. Tried to shovel one along for Street. It gets to him, but the Warriors keep it in. Shogby on the far side. Dropped it back and a shot. That one just missed wide. Warroad still with possession. They'll leave it back, but Lubinsky's there. Lubinsky on the far side. Gives it up. Turnover. And Warroad with another shot. And that one's saved. That one coming from Sunderland. Kelly able to get another save as this one is going to be knocked out of play. 7.30 line. 7.39 left here in the first period. 1-0 is the score. Warroad, six saves for Kelly. It feels like every one of them has been huge. Yeah, no, they really have been. And, and just an, an opportunity there for the Pirates to get the puck out of their own zone. They can't. And, and again, they're, they're hemmed in. They get a couple of good opportunities. The Warriors do. So they really got to make sure they get that puck past the blue line. Seeing War, uh, Warroad's speed right now being, being shown off. This one's going to be sent 
into the corner by Hauntvit. And it'll be Benson here on the near side. Gets it out. Warroad has a touch up, and they'll send it right back in for Kelly. We'll just nudge this one along for Larson. Pirates can't get it out of their own end, and a shot. That one's going to be knocked aside by Kelly once more. Battle for it in the corner to his side. As it'll be Lean who comes out with it. Now Benson, he was able to on the far side. It's Grappentine. Battle for it now still in the corner. Sunderland trying to avoid a couple of Pirates. He's unable to do so. Jay Reese sent it along. Goes off the stick of Ecker. Fisher comes in trying to bash it out. And Warroad still able to keep it in, but now it's Fisher. He's able to turn up ice. Gets to the red line, sends it in. The Pirates make a change. So here's James and a turnover. It's Larson able to come up with the loose puck. Sends this one around. Goes to the back for Hamry. Hamry reverses. Sends it all the way back down and around. Looking for Larson. Warroad's able to get it out. Now here's Pilgrim. Pilgrim on the near side, tried to backhand one into the middle. He was able to do so, but Warroad couldn't do much with it. And a big shot block from Miller got it out of their own end, and that one nearly took a deflection towards Kelly. It went off the stick of Lubinsky, but he'll fire it all the way down. They were looking for the stretch play for Edwards. Good idea, but Warroad read it, and they'll just send it in with Hardwick. Lubinsky, he'll send it back for himself. That one took a strange bounce, goes right out into the middle. It's still loose out in the middle. Now three or four different Pirates are there. That one nearly went out of play, went off the top part of the glass and all the way down, and Norris, he'll just nudge it along, and this will be Lund. Now on the far side, Warroad will just send it in. They'll make a change. Now it'll be Melsha. He'll turn up ice with it. Try to get it to Trudeau. It went off the back of his skate, and it's turned over. Now it's Anthony. Nice move. Anthony with the shot, and that one missed just wide. Hard is able to keep it in, and now it's Melsha. On the near side, and that one will go off of, now go out of play. Went just above the glass. 5.04 left here in the first period. One to nothing is the score. Warroad still with the lead. Pirates able to register one shot on goal to Warroad's nine. Well, at least they got that shot. Yes. That helps. That's a, that's a start. And, uh, you know, uh, so far they've been in their own zone a lot, but they've been able to do at least a decent job of not giving too many grade A opportunities. Shot and a save made from Kelly. As that one might have taken a redirection as well. This one will get sent down, no icing. Something that I've noticed tonight, Bo, I don't know about you, but as Norris covers, Pirates able to get some offensive zone time, even though that they spend a lot of time on their own end, they've still been able to generate some ozone time. No, they you know, they have had some some moments there. I mean, granted, they've, they've missed the net a couple of times, and that really, you know, obviously that's why the shot total is not, you know, in their favor by any means, but it could be a little closer if they were to hit the net a couple more times there, and... Yeah, no, it, it's good to at least see them getting into the zone, and, but uh, Warrell doing a phenomenal job, as expected, breaking out. And they're able to win in the faceoff dot. Stretch pass for Anthony. Now on the near side, a shot and a save made by Kelly once more. Kelly already with 10 saves here in the game as Lubinsky had it knocked off his stick. Lubinsky will circle around, flips this one down, looking for Ecker, and Ecker will just knock this in. It'll be Lund who... Gets to it first. Ecker able to send it into the middle, trying to shovel this one along, and a shot from a tough angle. That one's saved. Able to come up with the save again is Norris. It was Fisher who was down there as the second line, again providing a spark for the Pirates. This one goes all the way down, and now it's Lubinsky in his own end. He'll chip it forward, and now it's Ecker. Ecker, he'll toss it in. Pirates in the midst of a change. Norris, he'll send it over for Lund. Now it's Scapple. Scapple will throw one just wide of the cage. Sunderland sends it to Scapple in the corner. Centering pass. He was looking for Lean. It bounces all the way out to center. And now Warroad's had to chase it down. As Street was nearly able to chase it down. This one's deflected in by Warroad. No icing. As Kelly sent it back a little bit. And now it heads to the back for Hauntvit. Hauntvit trying to work with it. And... Sends it into the corner. He'll be knocked off there by Benson. Benson's going to get knocked down to the ice. As Here's Lean. Sends it down low for Scapel. Third line out there for Warroad right now. As this is Sunderland. 
Throw it across the ice for Hardwick. A shot, that one missed the net wide. Three minutes left here in the first. Still 1-0 Warroad as the Pirates are able to get it out of their own end. Trudeau tried to send it further and Edwards, he'll get to the red line, sent it down, but it only goes as far as Hauntfit. So here's Hammering. Up ahead for Jackson Reese. Sends it back for Lubinsky. He tried to backhand it along. Hit off of one of the Warriors and now goes back into their own end for Hamry. Trying to get it to Miller. This one goes back down behind Kelly. Lubinsky puts the brakes on and he'll head upward. Lubinsky flips this one down. This one is going to go just wide of Norris. It'll be icing. 2.22 left here in the first. Still 1-0. Warroad with the lead. Boy, this has been a quick period. Well, that's the thing. No p uh, penalties so far. Knock on one if you, if you want, if you can there. But, uh, no, it's been a quick, clean game back and forth. A lot of uh, chances both sides. And just give uh, credit to both goalies so far. They've been uh, playing pretty good. All right, let's make a late change. They'll send the second line out as Lubinsky sends it around, gets it to Lund. And now it's turnover. It's Jay Reese. Gets it over for Ecker. Ecker hits centering pass, looking for Fisher. That one was whacked out. And now it's Marvin Cordes on the far side. Tried to throw one. That one went through the crease and missed everything. Shot that was blocked. Jay Reese will spin and fire this one all the way down. And another icing is called. 155 left here in the first. Well, we're getting to that point of the period where, you know, you want to, you know, you don't want to go scored on you. Obviously, you want to get one in, but... You want to, it's because it can be a backbreaker, but really got to try to uh, play good defensive uh, play and, and again, make sure for either team, at least you're keeping the score as is. Face off win for Edwards, and now it's Benson. Pirates will play it along, and now it's Street. Try to get it up ahead for Edwards. Big hit from Pilgrim. You get a whistle. Is it offside or? No signal from any of. The refs said, oh, are we gonna and are here? we going to get a penalty? So it's going to be a penalty. So first penalty of the game is going to be against War Road. And I don't know. We'll have to wait for the PA announcer we, to give us a. Yeah, we didn't see a signal. I <laughs> and uh, Hard, uh, Coach Hardwick can uh, get an explanation as well, or wanting one. And we'll hear one shortly here from Corky. Here we go. Kevin James has called for the penalty. Unsportsmanlike. Hmm. Hmm. Lots of happen away from the play as Pilgrim walks in and scores. Carson Pilgrim with his second of the night. This time it's shorthanded and it's 2-1 or 2-0. Yeah, no, I mean, again, it, it's, <laughs> it's one of their best players, one of the best players in the state. And he had space, he had opportunity, and he picked his corner, and well, that's why he's going to, <laughs> he's playing D1 hockey. Well, we heard Coach Hardy talk about how uh, War Road, they're so good at scoring, even shorthanded, and they're able to do that there. That's Pilgrim with his second. This one gets sent down, goes off of the hand of Larson, he'll just bash this one forward. Now it's Jay Reese. Trying to put a couple of moves on, trying to get around Lund. He's able to do so. Gets into the corner, does Reese. Try to get it out for Benson, and this one is going to get sent out, and Ecker has to retreat to center. This one gets flopped over for Larson. Now it's Ecker with it. Ecker sends it in. Lund will whack it all the way down. Kelly gets a stick on it, and he'll leave it for Lubinsky. Lubinsky over for Hamry, back for Lubinsky, goes off his stick, and Reese and Lubinsky lose it, and Lubinsky, he's able to regain possession, and now he'll head upwards with it. Drops it off for Ecker on the far side. Ecker, he'll walk in, and sharp angle shot. That one was saved. Half a minute left. Pirates have 40 seconds left on the man advantage. Here's Pilgrim again. Sends it out to center. Hamry knocks it back for Lubinsky. He'll send it forward for Edwards, who will backhand it in. 15 seconds left in the period. As Hard will turn and send it all the way down. Kelly thought about playing it, decided not to. Five seconds left. 
And that is how the period will come to a close. 2-0 War Road with the lead. As both goals coming from Carson Pilgrim, it'll be 16 seconds of power play action for Crookston when we start the second period. We'll step aside, take a break, and we'll break down the first period after this here on KROX. Hi, I'm Dr. Angie Smith, optometrist at the Crookston Eye Clinic and Foston Eye Clinic. We aim to provide high quality products to our patients, things that we use ourselves in treating our own dry eye or coatings that we like to use on our own glasses. We offer myopia control contact lenses for children, which are soft contacts that not only correct their vision, but are designed to slow the progression of their nearsightedness. The eyes lead the body, and we are passionate about helping the eyes be safer, sharper, and faster. At Crookston High School, we really have a lot going on. There isn't that much going on. Oh yeah? We have softball, baseball, track and field, soccer, swimming, tennis, golf, volleyball, crap shooting, hockey, basketball, wrestling. So we have a lot of sports. And there is orchestra, band, choir, visual arts, speech, theater, video club. And Crookston is one of the highest academic schools in the region. Really? Yeah, really, especially in math and science. I guess we do have a lot of going on. Yeah, and that's why Crookston High School is my, my education, education destination. destination. Crookston Valley Cooperative in Crookston is your full-service local agronomy dealer delivering the products and services that you've come to expect. Crookston Valley Cooperative specializes in seed, chemical, and fertilizers that you need to keep your farm operation growing. For expert advice you can rely on, give Sean, Mike, or Matt a call at 281-1178 today or stop by at Crookston Valley Cooperative located at 1122 Fairfax Avenue in Crookston. Crookston Valley Co-op, here to keep you growing. Welcome back to the Crookston Sports Center as the kiddos, they're out on the ice right now, but it's a two to one War Road lead over the Crookston Pirates. The War Road, uh, War Road they are uh, out shooting Crookston 12 to three. Parker Kelly with 10 saves. Benjamin Norris with three saves for War Road. As we'll take a look at our draft sports bar and grill scoreboard update as uh, again, it was in the Varsity Girls game, Crookston, they won 4-1 to one over East Grand Forks. We had that on our KROX YouTube stream a little bit ago. And, uh, Bo, have any other scores? Yeah, let's take a peek, shall we? So, uh, and then the boys' JV game that was played at the same time as the girls' varsity game. World won that one 8-1. to one. And boys' basketball, Crookston's over at Holly, And uh, Chris should be on the air with that game. I didn't hear him earlier, but anyway. Um, so, uh, in the JV game, Holly won 48 to 33, and the C Squad game, Holly won 48 to 14. Uh, wrestling, Crookson at the Mayville Portland Quadrangular, and uh, Hillsboro Central Valley would defeat Crookson 38 to 24, and then Carrington, North Dakota, would defeat Crookson 48 to 27. There, uh, those are the scores that we have on our website at the moment, and obviously with uh, uh, a lot of the games probably starting here, you know, within the last you know, half hour or so. So uh, let's just see if we can get any scores here for, uh, we'll start with hockey since we are carrying some hockey games for you right now. Uh, let's see here, Hermantown up on St. Cloud Cathedral won nothing. That's a pretty big game in the first class single A. Otherwise, no scores for single A boys. And that's pretty much it there. For girls, uh, let's see any results here we can give you. Uh, no, not really. Uh, Proctor Hermantown up on Chicago Lakes 2-1. That's pretty much it for uh, more head over Bemidji, one nothing. Uh, that's uh, just that game is about to wrap up. So, uh, yeah, that's it for hockey. Let's move over to basketball, shall we? A lot of games played around the area right now. Let's start with the girls. And uh, let's see here. Looks like Kellyer North Holmes up on Nevis, 49 to 28. Five minutes left in that game. Uh, Park Christian they defeat Adelbert Weston, a close game, 55-53. Uh, let's see here. Any other? Games around the area here. Don't see scores there. We'll go to double A. Sox Center defeats Barnesville 78 to 63. And I think that might be it for what we're going to see here for girls basketball. For the boys basketball, uh, we'll start with uh, the bigger schools here since I'm already on that tab. Nothing really around the area there. Class double A. 
Uh, Sox center, Morris, Ario, Chicago, Alberta. There are 29 Sox centers up, 29-27 at the end of the first half. That's probably the closest game here. Oh, uh, let's see here. Frazee and Staples Motley. Frazee's leading 31-26, five minutes left in the first half. Holly is up on Crooks in 15-4 with uh, eight minutes left in the first. And that looks like that might be... Uh, that's probably going to be it, yeah, so... That's it for your uh, local varsity games that we have scores for, and I don't think there's any professional or college games going on. I will say, Crooks and Invitational for dance, That's the, that was taking place at starting at 6.15, so I'm not sure if that's uh, wrapped up or getting close to, uh, but either way, uh, I believe that's uh, pretty much all we're going to have for you for our uh, Draft Sports Bar and Girls Scoreboard Update. Again, right next door to the Crooks and Sports Center. A lot of great uh, options there. Um, and uh, Taco Tuesday night, or... A taco Thursday, taco inspired dishes, uh, or Mexican inspired dishes. Either way, the tacos are delicious. That's what I'm trying to get at. <laughs> the the shells are like fried there, and, uh, and oh, they're so good. So I can't I can't say enough about them. But also the cheese curds. Again, as Frank said in the previous stream and on the radio, ask your server for the Bo Melby cheese curds. They'll look at you confused, and hopefully they'll tell their boss that what happened, and then maybe I can get that sponsorship deal. As looks like another mini mite scored and <laughs> did a little selly, and we got about 23 seconds left of this. Uh, uh, the the Mini Mites playing. It's the Mini Mite boys out there. The Mini Mites girls were playing earlier, and um, just always a fun thing that happens. I remember way back when, when uh, in the old arena, I was able to do this during a varsity game as well. It's a it's a fun memory and really cool thing that happens. Although they're using an actual puck, it looks like we use the blue rubber one. So <laughs> looks like they've gotten stronger over the years. But either way, the Mites are done and uh, always good. A good stick taps there and very fun, exciting. Oh, looks like we have Josh Hardy talking about something here, though. Ooh, we're yeah. going to have a check presentation. Yeah, we'll, we'll keep it here for that. And it is Hockey Fights Cancer Night tonight. An excellent showing by the Crooks and Faithful. A lot of donations. I know we, I was talking to Coach Hardy before a pregame interview. He was saying that uh, there have been a lot of donations thus far. Yes, no, it's a, a very, you know, Danny Sylvester does so much for the Crookston uh, hockey community, and oh my, look at this check. This is going to be awesome. So, so far, this not, donations aren't over, but that's a check for $25,000. Wow. And counting, it says. That is amazing. So that is just a uh, that's just so cool. Uh, again, it's it's a great thing that they've been doing here the past two years now, or this year and last year. And um, Danny Sylvester again b battling breast cancer, uh, diagnosed last year, and just uh, um, just a real trooper. And uh, again, still still uh, taking you know even through all the treatments, uh, participating and and the mites and and the learning to play and and uh, husband Nick and their two kiddos are there as well. So uh, it's just so cool. Yeah. That is awesome. All righty then. So that, that's, uh, that's what it's all about here, folks. That's why the, uh, one of the reasons why it's such a big turnout tonight. Um, yeah, it's, it's uh, bigger than hockey. Uh, excellent, uh, excellent showing from the uh, Crookston community as uh, it, it, that, that's expected. You know, uh, the, uh, the Crookston community, they are, they are very supportive as the uh, players are giving yeah, hugs all around, and uh, just uh, it's overall uh, just a very positive night. You can really feel that, too, in the arena tonight. Yeah, we look after our own. That's what it's all about. And, uh, again, you know, you, you do a lot for your community. The community's got your back as well. And, uh, no, again, so it was uh, tough to hear that she was uh, diagnosed last year. But, again, it's a long road ahead, but this is, uh, this is huge. This is, this is really great to see. So. Well, Tyler, uh, we got through our sports bar, our draft sports bar and girl update, and uh, I think we can go ahead and take another break here. We'll come back yeah. and, and talk about that first period. Yeah, that sounds like a great plan, so we'll step aside and we'll break down the first period. 2 nothing Warroad with... Hi, I'm Dr. Angie Smith, optometrist 
to the Crookston Eye Clinic and Foston Eye Clinic. We aim to provide high quality products to our patients, things that we use ourselves in treating our own dry eye or coatings that we like to use on our own glasses. We offer myopia control contact lenses for children, which are soft contacts that not only correct their vision, but are designed to slow the progression of their nearsightedness. The eyes lead the body and we are passionate about helping the eyes be safer, sharper and faster. At Crookston High School, we really have a lot going on. There isn't that much going on. Oh yeah? We have softball, baseball, track and field, soccer, swimming, tennis, golf, volleyball, crap shooting, hockey, basketball, wrestling. So we have a lot of sports. And there is orchestra, band, choir, visual arts, speech, theater, Leo Club. And Crookston is one of the highest academic schools in the region. Really? Yeah, really, especially in math and science. I guess we do have a lot of going on. Yeah, and that's why Crookston High School is my, my education, education destination. Crookston Valley Cooperative in Crookston is your full-service local agronomy dealer delivering the products and services that you've come to expect. Crookston Valley Cooperative specializes in seed, chemical, and fertilizers that you need to keep your farm operation growing. For expert advice you can rely on, give Sean, Mike, or Matt a call at 281-1178 today or stop by at Crookston Valley Cooperative located at 1122 Fairfax Avenue in Crookston. Crookston Valley Co-op, here to keep you growing. With the fall season right around the corner, Grove Mechanical in Crookston is ready to prepare you for winter. They suggest having your heating system serviced regularly to keep things running smoothly. A skilled technician will clean and service your heating equipment to ensure safe and efficient operation. It's never too early to get ready for the upcoming winter season. Before the cold sets in, call Grove Mechanical today. Your hometown heating and cooling professionals. Give them a call, 218-281-3863, or visit their website, grovemech.com. Shopping for groceries is easier than ever with Hugo's Family Marketplace. To simplify life, Hugo's offers convenient online shopping with delivery or curbside pickup at GoHugos.com. Even better, shop on the go with the Hugo's Family Marketplace smartphone app. Download e-coupons, recipes, grocery lists, weekly ads, and place your grocery order right from your phone. Save time and save big with Hugo's Family Marketplace, your hometown grocer since 1939. You're gonna find more low prices, more great stuff when you go to Hugo's. Are you an enthusiastic sports fan? Want to have fun and get in on the action? Heck yes, that'd be awesome. Have great attention to detail? Want to stay active? Definitely. Want to give back to the student athletes in your community? Obviously, yes. Then you'd make an excellent high school sports official. We need more officials in Minnesota because with no high school officials, there are no high school sports. Sign up today at highschoolofficials.com. From shoulder to hand, hips to toes, and everything in between, the Riverview Health Orthopedic Team has you covered. With advanced training and joint replacements, upper and lower extremity, spine, foot, and ankle care, you know you'll be in good hands with Dr. Spinell, Shaw, Secundiac, Stanky, Kim, and Abasi. For appointments, call Riverview Clinic at 218-281-9595. It's always growing season here at United Valley Bank. We're focused on growth for our customers and communities, success for farms and businesses, and improvement for ourselves. Partner with us and you'll see firsthand just how much the right hometown banking team can change your perspective. Together, there's no limit to the heights we can reach. United Valley Bank, our roots make us stronger. Member FDIC, an equal housing lender. Hello, this is Lindsay Erdman, Executive Director at Benedictine Living Community Crookston. Over the years, we have seized the opportunity to make changes and improve the services that we offer. Healthcare has taken on a very distinct evolution, focusing on post-acute short stay and return to home. It is our privilege to continue to serve our community with continuum of care range memory care, post-acute short stay, and extended care. We are so grateful for the support of Crookston and the surrounding communities. In this season of giving and reflection, please know how very proud Benedict and Living Community of Crookston is to serve our community. Farming today doesn't always feel the same way you used to. Then again, some of it feels all the same. Maybe it isn't so much the jobs that changed, but how they get done. Now that's a different story. Efficiencies are critical. 
which is why you need who will find the right loan structure for a strong financial future. You need a lender to look out for your whole farm operation. Ag Country. Welcome back to the Crookston Sports Center. The Pirates still have 16 seconds of a man advantage when we begin the second period, but it's Warroad who has a 2-0 lead. Carson Pilgrim scoring both goals. He scored early in the first period, and then he scored late in the first period. First goal was uh, even strength. It was an assist from Taven James, and then the second was a shorthanded unassisted goal, and that is how we have a 2-0 game here as uh, Bo, let's uh, let's break down the first period for both sides. Warro, they were able to create a lot of offense, use their speed, but Parker Kelly stood up to the task. Ten first uh, first period saves. I mean, uh, going into this game, again, number two team in the state, can't say it enough. This is uh, one of the, the probably it is the top team in the section. Going down two two nothing after one is still uh, a win. I mean, honestly, this is a team that has uh, multiple Division One commits. And the one of them, one of them scored twice on you, so you can't be too mad about that. And and more importantly, like yeah, they were hemmed in their own zone a bit, but they kept them to the outside. They kept the the shot attempts uh, to uh, you know again to lo more low danger opportunities. And uh, I mean, granted, there was one opportunity for Carson Pilgrim on a breakaway there, and Parker Kelly up to the task. That was huge. But I mean, it's it, overall, I'd say the Pirates are definitely in that locker right now. Um, you know, not not you know ecstatic because they're down two, but. Definitely, they're not hanging their heads. They're saying, "Hey, you know what? I mean, we're we're playing with them right now. We gotta, you know, we just gotta make sure that they are gonna have their um, their um, their depth be a really big thing for them. I think if they can maintain their stamina and keep up with this team, because the, the Warriors are well well conditioned, they always are. Uh, they're gonna they're not gonna you know wear down during a game. So if the Pirates can stick with them and uh, keep it within you know a, a reach or a shot, whatever it may be, just really um." It'll be a, it'll be a big, big confidence booster. And, uh, you know, you, you mentioned Warroad's speed and how they've been able to use that, and, and, and that's something that Warroad's used to their advantage. And, and another thing you mentioned was Crookston being able to keep them out of those really dangerous scoring chances. We even saw a dangerous scoring chance from Pilgrim, uh, you know, kind of about in the middle of the period. Parker Kelly again with another save, and this is another game where you're probably going to have to lean on Parker Kelly a little bit until maybe the offense can finally start generating some offensive zone time. How do you do that against the Warriors defense where you see all three defensive pairs are able to create some offense? Yeah, it's tough because, I mean, they, they're they really good in their own zone with, uh, I mean, two passes, they're in the uh, they're in your zone already. Their, their breakout is phenomenal. They have uh, clean passes. They have uh, the speed as well to, to, you know, get past you, get behind you, and all of a sudden, yeah, they, they got a breakaway. So I think uh, the Pirates just need a – as it's, it's tough because you can't really – you can't uh, de uh, jump uh, – dump and chase because they're so good at retrieving the puck in their own zone and getting out and it's tough to carry because their forwards are, are also back and their and their defense are also I mean they they can hold their their own blue line and make it tough so you can't skate it past them so it's kind of they're gonna have to really mix just kind of do a little bit of both and and maybe carry it in and chip a little bit try to chip off the glass or to yourself or whatever it may be just to try to get around a guy but uh you know they just got to start getting some shots on net and and you know maybe a, 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 a play I like is the the, the pop or a, a pass off the pa pad, um, you know where you shoot it off the pad. You have a guy on the other side waiting for the rebound, something like that. It's going to take something along those lines uh, to beat Norris. So uh, it, it's that's the thing. It, it's not going to be easy, and uh, there's a lot uh, a lot you're going to have to do right. And some honestly, probably some some bounces or mistakes that's going to have to come your way from Warroad that doesn't happen too often. So if it does, you got to take advantage. I do like that uh, play of uh, throw, throwing it off the pad. It, it, yeah. uh, you know, it almost never fails. You know, it's a, it, it's a technically a shot, but it really yeah. is a pass. Exactly. Yeah. No. It's a, yeah. I mean, that's the thing. It, if you do it enough times, it's going to be there. I mean, it's not going to be there every time, uh, but uh, I mean, if you keep it, keep it going, and you keep being, you're getting, being in good position, have your stick on the ice as well. That's another thing. If you skate over there and the, pat, the puck comes right to you, but your stick's not on the ice, I mean, that's a pointless opportunity. Nothing changes. So. Um, that's the thing. The Pirates just have to, again, I think if they keep on rotating their lines and uh, get their, just keep their legs with them, uh, they'll be able to at least keep it within a decent score. I mean, it, again, it's it's a kind of, you know, you don't want to say that, but at the same time, I mean, this is a different game. This is a, this is a completely different game than any game you're going to play this season, even against East Grand Forks. This world team is different this year. 
this is one of their better teams. So you got to be ready for it, and uh, you really just got to try and, uh, you know, take as many lessons as you can and, and, and you know, stick with it. And you know, who knows? It's high school hockey. Things can happen. Yeah, well, especially in hockey, you, you never know. A, a weird One, bounce yep. off of off of the you know the glass or just the puck in general, and 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 something good could happen. And and you never know what will end up happening as the Pirates they make their way out onto the ice right now. War Road, uh, they're when they score three or more goals, they are 12 and 0 this season. 0 and 3 when they only score two goals. They have yet to score less than two goals on the season. They've already hit that mark. Wow, uh, that is uh, quite the stat and. And the thing is, too, I mean, uh, their schedule is, you know, it's the toughest in class single A, I would assume. I mean, it's it's got to be. They, they go above and beyond. They're playing a lot of teams from the cities. A lot of the cities teams come up to them. So uh, their schedule is definitely one of the toughest. So the fact that so they are 12 and 3 on the year, is that is that yes. correct? I mean, that's uh, that just shows that's why they're the number two team in the state. And it's always them, them in Hermantown and in the class single A, so uh, and I think they play later on this week, or maybe it was last week. Either way. Yes, um, they will play on yeah. Saturday. It'll be number one against That's number two. Thought. It'll yeah. be War Road at Hermantown, a uh, 2022 <laughs> state championship game rematch oh, as well. Yeah, that's so, crazy. But, uh, uh, yeah, so that's the thing. It's 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 uh, a tall task ahead, and, and again, uh, if Crookson just plays like they've been playing as of late and, and you know, keeping keeping their, their wits about them, they'll be at least in this game. And the good thing is, you know, I mean, it is only 16 seconds of a man advantage, but, hey, we've seen the Pirates score twice in nine seconds, so you never know what could happen. I, I kind of got the same feeling I did against Thief River Falls in that first period. Did you? Yeah, no, I mean, that's the thing. That it, I think it was uh, – I, I wouldn't be surprised if Ward in the locker room said, okay, this team's a little – this is different from years past because I've, I've watched games, I've, I've broadcast the games where it can get out of hand right away in the first period, but Crookson kind of held their own, and, yeah, there's two goals, and, again, they're from their – you know, probably one of their best, but not the best player on that team. So you can't be too mad about yourself, but uh, too down on yourself for, for Crookston. But that's the thing. They're like, okay, you know, we got to maybe turn on the Jets a little bit more than we thought. So we'll see as, uh, as you said, we're getting ready to drop the puck in the second period. It'll be Edwards and Pilgrim in the faceoff circle as they're tied up. And this one's just going to be spun down by Marvin Cordes. He'll go all the way down for Kelly to take it in his own end. He'll leave it there, and Levinsky... He'll, st he'll start upward, turns it over, and Pilgrim quickly with a backhand and a save made by Kelly as he comes out of his crease to make the save. Just two seconds left on the man advantage, and uh, you t that's another one where they turned it over in a tough spot. And again, that's probably one of the guys you don't want to do it to, but, uh, you know, it's, you can't be keeping giving, giving him opportunities. That's the second time that they've done it for Pilgrim, and Kelly has stopped him both times on that one, even though Pilgrim with two goals as Warroad Kills off the power play as it's Marvin Cordes coming up the near side. He'll try a shot. That one save. Whacking this one out of the air was Pilgrim showing off his nifty hands. And this one banked off the glass and all the way down. Ecker trying to chase it down. He'll do so in the corner. Ecker loses the puck. And now he'll be back for Ecker at center. He'll send it in. This one will go all the way down for Lund. And Lund, he'll be harassed by Edwards. He'll just have to leave it. On the far side for Marvin Cordes. He'll be bodied off there by Fisher. Now it's Lund. Up ahead, gets it to Marvin Cordes. He throws one across. He was looking for James. Instead, it will be Benson. Jay Reese, he'll turn up with it. Good stick there as it was Hantvit who was able to stop Jay Reese right as he was trying to exit the zone. And it will be Anthony in the... Near side gets it to Hauntvit, and now they'll send it back down, and it'll go all the way around. And who will win the race on the far side? It'll go back for Hardwick, and he'll throw this one in and all the way around as well. Buck is going to squirt loose, and Kelly will just cover it up. 15-23 left here in the second. Still 2-0 War Road as the Pirates still make a change. We'll see the third line come back out for the Pirates. And a quick update for you here for Crooks and Boys Basketball. It's Holly up 28-24 at the half. Holly started on a 15-0 run, and Crooks responded with a 23-0 run. 23-0 run. Yeah. And a save made by Kelly as a shot from the point, able to get a stick on it was Henham, and Kelly was able to track that one down. And that's the thing. Kelly's been doing a good job tracking the puck. you got to keep that going if you're going to obviously keep this one close. I just got to go back to that basketball score. You're telling me the Pirates scored all of their points but one on a on a run? Apparently. 
That's on the radio side, KROX Radio. We thank you for joining us on the KROX YouTube stream as Tegan Lubinsky gets to center. He'll be knocked off the puck by Henham. Turnover as Miller flops it in. Chasing this one down is Lund. On the far side, it'll be Warroad able to get out with this as it'll be Anthony with the shot, and that one was blocked off into the corner. Jackson Reese spins and turns this one down, and it'll be hard. Hard will throw it in as Warroad has to touch up. They'll head to the bench to make a change. Pirates will make a, a change as well. Get some fresh bodies out onto the ice. One of them is Caden Edwards. Big collision there as he sends it in, and the Pirates try and make some more changes. Able to one-hand this one along as Lund as he lost his glove. This one will get sent down by Warroad. Kelly will retrieve it, and Melsha was there. He'll drop it back. Edwards throws this one up ice. A little too far as Hauntvit is there. Hauntvit gets to the blue line, throws it in. Hamry in the corner. Let it go, and now it'll be Edwards once again. Edwards will leave it for Trudeau. Trudeau, his shot, that one was blocked. Went off the skate of Hauntvit in the corner. Now Warroad trying to come out with this, and they will, and it will be Sunderland. Sunderland at center. Gains the blue line. Throws it on net. Kelly will glove it down. 13.45 left here in the second. 2-0. Warroad still with the lead. A couple of saves this period for Kelly. Yeah, and that can be a dangerous shot there with uh, using the defender as a, a screen there. But Kelly was in good positioning and made the save. And we saw that's how uh, Warroad scored on their first goal. Pilgrim was able to fire it through. A lot of traffic out in front. Able to keep this one in was Hauntvit. Goes to the far corner now. Marvin Cordes. Back for Grappentine and his shot. That one took a deflection, went off the referee, and the Pirates will fire it all the way down. They're going to say no icing as it was deflected. So it will be Grappentine who has to go all the way back down to get in. He wasn't able to get it out cleanly. Fisher was there applying the pressure. So is Jay Reese. This one gets sent out to center. Melsha will fire it right back down. Goes to Hauntvit. Hauntvit puts the brakes on. Jay Reese is there trying to force the turnovers. Jay Reese still working with it as it'll be Grappentine who gets it there, sends it almost out. Referee put the whistle to his mouth. He was anticipating it to leave the ice, but it did not. And play continues. Big hit there as Fisher was hit at the blue as he was trying to send it in. And it'll be Warroad able to get it out, and now it's Marvin Cordes. Turns up ice, and his shot, that'll be blocked by Lubinsky. Here's Pilgrim. Pilgrim, he'll walk the blue line. Into the far side, Pilgrim still with it. Now he loses it, and now it's Bauchow. Bauchow gets to center and throws it in. First time that we've seen Bauchow today. Fourth line trying to get out there for Crookston. Akis is there, is tripped up and lost the puck, and now it's Pilgrim. Pilgrim gets it out to center for James. James will backhand it along. Warroad will make a change as it's Lubinsky. Lubinsky sends it forward. This one goes by Lund. Akis is there on the near side. Puck on it comes out loose, and now it'll be picked up by Hardwick. Offside will be called on Warroad. 11.51 left here in the second. Yeah, it looks like some physical play here is starting to come uh, up, up out a little bit more here. Feels like that's uh, been a theme for these Cruxton games where First period, not as much hitting. Second period, it really escalates. Yeah, you're not wrong. So as long as it's clean, I uh, love to see it and keep it up. Again, just one penalty called up to this point. Benson gets this to Larson. He'll throw it just wide of Norris. Norris was just making sure that it wasn't going to be on frame. Now on the near side, it's Shogaby. Shogaby winds up his shot, just missed the cage. Out to the back, Lund, his shot was blocked, and here's Benson on the far side. Benson, maybe a two-on-one, threw it across, looking for Jackson Reese. He'll turn and try and bash one further. Benson looking for Miller. Now it goes for Anthony. Anthony on the far side, flops one out towards center. Larson had to get a stick on it. It'll be scooped up by Hard. Hard on the near side, takes a big hit, goes down to the ice. They still battle for in the corner. Now it's Henham. Goes around the net, sends it to the back for Anthony. Anthony sends it over, one-timer from Lund. That one's saved by Kelly. Six minutes through this second period. 
Trying to chase this one down his street. He's able to do so. Puts the brakes on, avoids a huge hit. But he ended up losing the puck in the process, and Lund will send it up ahead. Hitting is really starting to turn up here, as Bo you just mentioned. This one sent in by Lean. Binsky takes a hit from Sunderland. Now it's Edwards trying to get it to Trudeau, but goes off his stick, and now it's Lean with the shot. Save made by Kelly, and rolling puck, unable to be claimed by anyone, and now it'll be Trudeau. He'll try and take it one on three, and a good stick from Grappentine. He was able to jar it free. Now it's Lean the other way. Lean with the shot. He winds up, and that one goes high. This one kept in, and a good play by Sunderland to keep it in, but his shot was blocked off, and Grappentine has to come back, sends it over for Hauntvit, and he'll send it in. This one will be touched up, and Warroad will make a change. So here's Hamry, motoring along, gets to center, had it knocked off his stick. Ecker trying to one-hand it in. He's able to get it into the offensive zone. Jay Reese comes in off the bench. He was able to knock it free, but the Pirates were offside. Had to touch up, and a delayed penalty is going to be called on Crookston, and so we get our first Penalty of the game called on Crooks, and it's going to be Jay Reese who will head to the box. I'm waiting for the call here. Is it going to be tripping? Huh. <laughs> I, I didn't see the trip. I, I mean, I thought it was going to be a, a, a penalty for something hitting-wise, but uh, like a high hit or something. I thought I saw just a check, so. But uh, trip's called, and here we go. First time that War Road's on the power play as it'll be two-minute penalty on Jay Reese. Now here's Pilgrim. Pilgrim using speed on the far side. Sharp angle shot, that save. A rebound out in front. Kelly still making the save. He's scrambling for it. Couldn't cover it, and it's going to go right back to Pilgrim. Out into the middle. Now a quick shot and a save made by Marvin, uh, Marvin Cordes as Kelly was kind of showing it in his glove. <laughs> I think he even might have been surprised it was in there. Oh, there it is. That's kind of <laughs> what that one was. But uh, And that's the thing. You, you're in good position as a goalie. You can make saves like that. It's, that's really what it is. I mean, uh, if you're out of position, you're not going to get that one. But luckily, he was following the puck well and makes that big save. And maybe, yeah, unintentionally flashy, <laughs> I'd probably say. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it almost looked like he was like, oh, hey. Yeah, he, you could even see him kind of take a look <laughs> into his glove. Aceoff goes back to Pilgrim, now sent across as they try to send it over for Marvin Cordes. It goes off his stick and it's back to Pilgrim. Now to the top, Hauntvit. Now Pilgrim with the shot. That one goes wide and it's going to go all the way down and out. 45 seconds have elapsed on the man advantage for Warroad. Shots 21 to 3, Warroad with the shot advantage. Pirates yet to register a shot in this period. Hamry with the good stick, banks it off the glass and out. That one goes as far as Hauntvit. He'll throw it back for Pilgrim. Pilgrim, couple of moves, gets into the middle. His shot, that saved, and then it was cleared away, but not out. Lund, across for James. To the back for Hauntvit. Over for Pilgrim. Pilgrim walks in, his shot goes wide. Goes all the way over for James on the far side. Now it's Marvin Cordes back to James. James over for Pilgrim. Pilgrim drops it back for Hauntvit. His shot, that's saved by Kelly. Pilgrim sent it out in front. That one takes a ricochet bounce into the corner. 25 seconds left on the power play. This one goes all the way around for Pilgrim. Goes through, and Pilgrim is able to get it. Tried to backhand this one. Goes to Trudeau, and he fired it right to Hauntvit. Pilgrim heads off for a change. So does a couple other Warriors on the power play. Kelly was unable to stop it behind. Just a couple of seconds left on the man advantage for Warroad. Hamry there on the boards, and Trudeau, he'll whack it down. And that is going to do it for the power play. So the Pirates are able to kill it off. Both teams at full strength. Here with seven and a half left in the second period. And they played it back. It went off of Bent, and now it's Shogaby. Shogaby into the corner. That's to the back for Hardwick. Hardwick will fire it all the way down around for Henham in the corner. He'll be greeted there by Larson. Knocked off the puck, and Jay Reese was trying to come up with it. Now it's Larson. Gets it to Reese. Reese spun it down, but it goes off of Ecker and stays in the zone. Now this one will get blasted down, and it will be an icing. 6.55 left here in the second period. 2-0 Warroad still with the lead. 
Pirates still haven't gotten a shot on goal. Warro, they've had 10 shots on goal, including the power play, but the Pirates are able to keep him out of the net during the power play. Well, that was a, a big kill at the end there. That final kill as the penal, or, uh, penalty was expiring. Those were some gas penalty killers there and, and just huge for the Pirates. Fourth line out there for Crooks in a shot from a tough angle. That one's going to be saved by Kelly. Shaw going to be tried the shot. Kelly with his 21st save of the evening. Yeah, and uh, again, he's been just in good positioning, so it's, it's really good, and, and uh, you know, that's the thing. It's <laughs> He needed to do that. It looks like he's got some equipment issues. Well, he's trying to find the puck. It got oh. lost in his paraphernalia, so. <laughs> there it is. There it is. It drops <laughs> out, so. <laughs> Puck's really sticking to Kelly tonight. Oh, yeah, uh, boo, wow. <laughs> Jeez, get him off the stage. That's terrible. <laughs> oh, that was good. It's uh, it's tough to follow the Hall of Famer, so i got to come up with some material. <laughs> as, uh, another face-off to Kelly's left. Edwards in the face-off circle with Hennem, and Hennem's going to be thrown out, so Anthony will step in, and Edwards will win the draw. It's another theme for Crooks, and they've been able to win a lot of face-offs. They've been able to continue that. That hasn't just been a uh, one-game thing. Buck will come out to the blue line. It'll be picked up by Anthony. He had to come back out to center. This one will get thrown in. Big hit thrown by Edwards. Far side, it's Henham. Trying to get this to Anthony. Spins and fires a shot. That one ended up hitting Henham. A little friendly fire as Edwards flops this one forward, trying to find Trudeau. And that one is going to go too far will be an icing. That's the only downside about icing in, in high school. You can't beat the, the defender to get to the puck first. As soon as it gets past that red line, it's done. But again, that is for safety concerns. So that is at least good that they have that out there. And another good thing on the high school level, you can make changes on the icing too. That's a, that's a huge, huge advantage. Another face-off win for Jay Reese, and now it's Fisher. Trying to bank it off the boards, gets it out. Trying to chase this one down with Scaffold. They're able to do so. Fisher with a big collision. Benson sends it in. Pirates delayed offside, so they have to go back and touch up. So it'll be Scaffold who will be able to claim it. Trying to start upward. A collision there as he's blown, and it is a tripping call. So the Pirates head back to being a man down. Another penalty or power play for Warroad. 547 left. And we saw a lot of Pilgrim on that uh, on that first power play. You have to think uh, we're going to see a lot of the same. I can pretty much just put the camera right in that right part of the ice here. I wouldn't be surprised. So here's Pilgrim. Back for Hauntvit. Back for Hauntvit. Now Pilgrim on the near side. Pilgrim once again. Holds on to it. Now a shot from the point. That one's saved by Kelly. He sprawls out and is able to cover it up. Wow. <laughs> Dangerous play there as he, he left his crease 20 seconds into the power play. Well, I mentioned it before earlier this year. He likes to use all 6-2 of that frame and, and go sprawling for some uh, loose pucks and, and get the freeze. And it's not uncommon for him to leave the crease, too. He likes to leave the blue paint. Very true. James, cross for Pilgrim. Back for... Hunt fit a shot. That one never got all the way through. It was blocked out in front, and that one rang off the pipe and out of play as spinning with that one was Lund in the middle. And he caught the crossbar, and faceoff will be to Kelly's left. Pirates make a change on the penalty kill as it'll be Ecker out there. So is Street, Hamry, and Lubinsky, the penalty killers. But it's Lund. Dropping it off for James. Hauntvit at the top. Hauntvit gets it back at the point. Shot, another save made by Kelly. Scrambling for it out in front. It goes into the corner. Ecker will leave it there as it'll be Pilgrim once again at the top. Pilgrim with the shot. Save for Kelly. About a minute left here on the power play. 23 saves for, for Parker Kelly. He has saved all 13 shots he has faced in this period. Yeah, and uh, you know, let's say Wardo, their their power play isn't really too high pressure. It's more so just passing back and forth. The Pirates are not being too aggressive, letting them pass it, kill time off. Now here's Pilgrim, has to drop it back. No one was there and able to nearly keep it in as Hauntvin, and he wasn't able to, and so 
He has to retreat to center, and that will kill off some precious seconds. Pilgrim on the far side, using that speed, goes behind the cage, and Pilgrim still working with it. Fan on the pass, he's able to maintain possession. Now Humphrey with the shot. Excellent shot block from Street. How many times have we said <laughs> that lately? Pilgrim, no look pass, whips it over for James. 20 seconds left on the power play. Pilgrim, watches over. Good stick there from Ecker, can't keep it out. Pilgrim, cross for James. James winds up another shot block. That one went off of the stick of Street. A wraparound attempt, and it didn't go. It was Kelly. He was out of position. The wraparound wouldn't find the back of the net, and the Pirates have killed another power play. Another shot block. This one coming from Benson. And this one is going to be flipped down by Melsha. Lund gets it over. Centering opportunity. That one went off of Henham into the corner. Broken stick out there. Benson had his stick broken. He has to go to the bench. Now out in front, this one is going to be trying to be whacked down. It is, and it will go all the way down for Hardwick. Has to retreat to his own end. 3.15 left here in the second period. 2 to nothing. still War Road. Two first period goals from Carson Pilgrim. One even strength, one shorthanded. Now on the far side, a shot that saved by Kelly. Has to dive out and cover it up as one of the Warriors took a tumble right over Kelly as he was sprawling out, jumping out, trying to get to it. So 3.03 left here in the second. Two huge kills for the Pirates. I mean, uh, that was just a phenomenal penalty kill. And that can give your team momentum as well. I mean, uh, you're, you're doing a good job. You're not being too aggressive. You're being in the right position. You're blocking shots. It's, it's those little things that can add up and give you confidence and uh, allow you to kind of make some plays. Face-off win for Larson. Amory throws it across for Lubinsky. Lubinsky goes off the glass for Miller. Miller was able to get it out, delayed offside, as Warroad will have to touch up as they do. Amory circles back in, gets it to Lubinsky. Goes off the boards, goes right back to Lubinsky, sends it in, goes off the stick of Miller, and he'll chase it down. It'll be Hardwick. Gets it over for Grappentine. Now Larson couldn't get to it, and it'll be Anthony. Over for Shogaby, and into the middle. He loses possession, and it will be Miller who will head up ice with it. Miller flips it in. Jackson Reese will chase. Able to get to it first was Lund. That hands this over for Shogaby. Now a turnover, and Jackson Reese will turn and fire a shot. That's saved by Norris. Have to see if they'll register a shot on goal. Well, they should, but... Two minutes left here in the period. There's that first shot on goal of the period for the Pirates. Foul for it in the corner. Puck is loose as able to get to it first was Larson. Larson behind the cage. Big collision there as Puck is now under Larson. He'll throw it along and it's Melsha spinning and it'll go to Colburn. Able to keep it in was Lund. Larson shovels it along. Melsha trying to get to it first in the corner. Lean is there, and now it's Sunderland walking on the near side. His shot was blocked by Larson. Now a shot from the point, and that one hit the outside of the cage as well. Goes off into the corner. Now it's behind the net. Akis sent it further. Bouchow comes in, but it's going to be Warroad who will have it. Now it's Hauntvin on the far side. His shot goes wide. Trying to send it down was Akis. He's able to get it out of their own end for the time being. This one... Goes over to Larson, he'll throw it down. No icing as it was deflected down. The Pirates make a change. Long pass, Sunderland taps it in. And Lubinsky will curl around his own cage, 50 seconds left in the period. Lubinsky loses it as now on the far side it's James. And in the middle, Marvin Cordes, a shot, that's blocked by Hamry. Now it's Lund. Lund working with it on the far side, a shot, and they score! It's Ryan Lund who scores with 31.8 seconds left, and it's 3-0. Oh, that was a bummer there. I mean, just uh, the puck just really found that little zone in that little spot there where, where Kelly couldn't see it, just kind of flung at, net, at the net there, and, and a tough goal there late in the, in the second period. But, uh, I mean, hey, I mean, if, as long as you don't allow another one here in 30 seconds, 
Giving up one goal, not the end of the world. So Ryan Lund able to get the goal. Tavin James gets his second assist. Now here's James right now. His shot, that one was blocked out in front. Still battle for it. Oro Davis scoop it up, and now a shot. That one also is blocked as well by Street. And the Pirates still send it out to center. It'll be Hardwick who will just retreat to his own end, and that is how the period comes to a close. So War Road, they were able to get 16 shots on goal. One of them finds the back of the net as it was Ryan Lund who scores his first of the evening. It's a 3-0 lead for War Road after two. We'll step aside and take a break, and we'll break down what we saw in the second period right after this. For all of your automotive service needs, call Christian Brothers Ford here in Crookston. We have a service team to handle all of your vehicle's needs. Does your vehicle pull to the right or left? Call and schedule an alignment today. Proper alignment saves gas and wear on your tires. We're here to take care of your vehicle repairs and maintenance. Call Christopher or Jersey in the service department at 281-1338. Make an appointment today with the service department at Christian Brothers Ford of Crookston, where we make it easy. This is my farm. Don't come out here and tell me what I need. I need solutions that work and market options that are worth my time. Small town support that sees the bigger picture. A global network that empowers us. A co-op that's there for us every day. Ever wonder what your city government does for you? They provide police and fire protection, emergency and disaster preparation, building code and zoning enforcement, street repair, cleaning and snow plowing, curbside garbage and recycling collection, plus spring and fall cleanup weeks. They deliver safe drinking water and maintain a wastewater system. They care for 22 parks and provide year-round recreation activities. They give loans for economic development and housing. They do all the work with the help of your city employees. Hi, I'm Dr. Angie Smith, optometrist at the Crookston Eye Clinic and Foston Eye Clinic. We aim to provide high quality products to our patients, things that we use ourselves in treating our own dry eye or coating things that we like to use on our own glasses. We offer myopia control contact lenses for children, which are soft contacts that not only correct their vision, but are designed to slow the progression of their nearsightedness. The eyes lead the body, and we are passionate about helping the eyes be safer, sharper, and faster. At Crookston High School, we really have a lot going on. There isn't that much going on. Oh yeah? We have softball, baseball, track and field, soccer, swimming, tennis, golf, volleyball, crap shooting, hockey, basketball, wrestling. So we have a lot of sports. And there is orchestra, band, choir, visual arts, speech, theater, Leo Club. And Crookston is one of the highest academic schools in the region. Really? Yeah, really, especially in math and science. I guess we do have a lot of going on. Yeah, and that's why Crookston High School is my, my education, education destination. destination. Welcome back to the Crookston Sports Center. The Chuck -a Puck just concluded. Actually, the uh, Chuck -a Puck winner in the girls game, that was Kyler Lean. He actually won right. the Chuck -a Puck for War Road there as uh, it, it's War Road up three to nothing after two here as second period intermission. It was just one goal scored in that uh, period. It was Ryan Lund. He, he scored right at the end with about 30 seconds left. He got an assist uh, from Taven James. So Taven James gets... Two assists on the evening. Carson Pilgrim, he scored two goals in the first. Parker Kelly with 15 saves in that period. Benjamin Norris just faced one shot. He was able to get the save there. 
So, Bo, uh, let's uh, let's take a look at our Draft Sports Bar and Grill scoreboard update, and then we'll talk about what we saw. Of course, yeah. So, uh, as you uh, if you were watching the video stream earlier or was listening on the radio, the Crooks and Girls hockey team would get a win over the East Grand Forks Green Wave right here at the Crooks and Sports Center, four to one. In boys hockey, and their JV is playing as we speak. I should mention as well, boys hockey JV World One eight to one in that game. Boys basketball, uh, Crookston over at Holly. That's on the radio right now as we speak. And uh, Holly in the JV game won forty eight to thirty three in the C squad game. Holly won forty eight to fourteen at the half. This was about uh, half hour ago, so uh, I don't have a final score for you. But um, Holly was up twenty eight to twenty four at the half. Holly started on a fifteen zero run. And then Crookson responded with a 23-0 run. Can't make it up. Anyway. <laughs> high school sports. Uh, high school sports. So there you go. And then finally, the last Crookson sport, uh, as Crookson dance, I, I should say, too, they have an invitational today. We don't have any results. But uh, Crookson wrestling, they're at the Mayville, Portland, North Dakota uh, quadrangular. Uh, Hillsborough Central Valley would defeat Crookson 38-24. Carrington over Crookson 48-27. And then Crookson and Mayville, Portland tied 31 apiece, but Crookson won by criteria. Fewer forfeit losses. Other than that, that's all we got for sports. As uh, again, we are still getting close here to the uh, final games, or finals, I should say. So uh, that's what we got for you right now. We'll give you more updates uh, after in the post game show. Thank you, Bo. As uh, let's talk about the uh, second period. It was you know obviously dominated by War Road. They get two power plays, but Crookson kills off both. Both of those power plays. Yeah, they gave up the late goal, and yeah, that might sting Crookson a little bit, but. You, you know, you got to think back. They were down 3-0 early in the third period against Thief River Falls, ranked opponent. They were on the road. We saw two goals in nine seconds there. Now, I'm not saying that's what's going to happen here. <laughs> but what I am yeah. saying is they've been in this spot against a ranked opponent. They know what it's like. Yeah, no, I mean, this is un this is not unfamiliar territory. They they understand that, hey, you know, we're, we played pretty decent hockey. I did. Those are two big penalty kills that, that they had earlier I mean, you're going up against a power play that I'm assuming is clicking at a pretty high rate. Uh, I think the main thing is is that they weren't really aggressive. They kind of they stayed at home. They were they had their sticks in, in passing lanes, but they didn't they weren't trying to chase them around. Especially um, uh, Carson Pilgrim, who obviously has the speed and the shot. Who can if he beats you, you're he's going to put it in the back of the net more than likely. And so I think uh, that was huge for the Pirates. And and right now, I mean, I'm, I'm, I can guarantee you, if, uh, if you were to be listening to the World Locker Room right now, they would be saying, we did not expect to be only be up by three after two periods of play, especially given the history of their um, of the results of, from the past games over the past few years. Um, it, it could be 8-1 right, or 8 nothing right now. So, I mean, it's a, it's, it's a good game for Crookson. Again, it would have been really nice if they would gotten that shutout in that period. That last goal just kind of, again, stings a little bit, and, and I'm sure Parker Kelly wanted that one back a little bit. But, uh, you know, honestly, it, it's, a, it's a great game they've played so far. And if they can keep this up and, and just, you know, maintain this play, uh, they'll be very, very happy. Even if they give up another goal or two, I mean, it would be nice if they could score one. <laughs> but, yeah. but, I mean, a goal or two a period against the top, the number two team in the state, I mean, that's, that's a huge improvement over, over years past. And it's got to give you confidence, too, moving forward, because who knows? Maybe they see each other come, come postseason time. You, you, you never know. But to, to think to yourself, hey, we, you know, uh, not, not long ago, we played a uh, top 15 ranked team in Thief River Falls, 3 nothing in the third period. There's a penalty shot there as well. Parker Kelly made the save. You end up uh, with, with two crazy goals. It's 3-2 to two there. Then, not that much later, you end up with, uh, you know, 3 nothing here after two. You, never, you don't know what the, well, obviously we don't know at this point what the third period's going to hold, but, you know, you, you hang around, you know, you can say to yourself on the Crookston side, hey, we can play with these teams. Yeah. And on the other side for War Road, do you, do you think there's going to be any sense of frustration? I mean, it's possible. I mean, uh, you could definitely, I mean, they were taking a lot of shots and they were missing wide. It was almost as like if they were picking their corner too much and, and, and that's something where I think we're a team that, that they think, oh, I mean, we should be scoring 20 goals this game where you're just trying to, you know, beat the goalie and, and uh, you know, pick a corner each time. And so I, I don't know. I mean, I think that might be part of it where, again, World might be, again, maybe, again, taking it back saying, hey, this is this is not the same Crookson team we've, we've faced over the past few years. This is this is a team that has some depth. They have some guys who can who can uh, grind, who can, uh, you know, get you off the puck. They can, they, they can have some physical play without being, uh, you know, too – over the top and, and not uh, towing, or not going over the line. And, and uh, no, I mean, this has definitely uh, been a good showing so far. I mean, 
Most uh, times you won't say that three no down three nothing after two periods of play, but again, you're talking about a, a top team in the state where yeah, you can you can be okay with being down three nothing. And again, you would love to get some more shots on goal. I think that's something that can really we'll really try to work on in this, in this last period. But uh, defensively, they've been doing a really good job keeping World to the outside. And you've got to think that might, that might be the message that Coach Hardy's going to be sending here is, you know, trying to get something going on the offensive end. You know, how do you figure out getting past the defensemen? Because we talked about it in the first period of intermission, the three defensive pairs for Road, for War Road, they are spectacular. They skate so well, it almost feels like there's three defensemen out there. No, oh, exactly. I mean, it's, it's, it's really tough. So it was good, though. I mean, the Pirates, again, they, they had some uh, good opportunity. They got through the neutral zone and, and they were maybe got just across the blue line, maybe chipped in and passed or off the glass, just tried to get the puck down low and, and were with the defenseman so they couldn't field it as cleanly as they did in the first period. We'll have to wait and see what, what the, the Pirates can do and, and uh, you know, if Warroad's going to make adjustments that will maybe, you know, tighten things down or, or you know, if they're going to still be aggressive on the offensive zone. I mean, it'll be, uh, it'll be interesting to see. And, and uh, you know, as long as Crookson can just, you know, not be hemmed into their own zone for too long at a time, uh, that will really help. Do you think maybe you just get to the blue line, just throw it on net, throw, you know, just just see what happens? Because, you know, we heard Coach Hardy in his interview say, you know, get get the pucks on net. And, and that's obviously not exactly what he's thinking. But at this, you know, juncture in the game, why not? And it's like we said earlier, weird bounce happens. Yep. You get one in in the net. Who knows? That can that can completely flip the game. And, you know, for the other side for War Road, yeah, you made a really good observation. That was something that I was thinking, too, is, you know, picking their corners, a lot of shots missing wide. And if you just keep throwing them on net, eventually, you know, one of them's going to go. Yeah, and that's, I think that would be uh, a great idea for Crooks and just, uh, again, easier said than done. But just, again, yeah, just start getting some some opportunities just to get it on net. At the very least, maybe you'll get just an offensive zone draw, you know. Like I said, you just kind of float one on there, but you chase your your shot and you follow your shot. And then, you know, obviously if it's a, an opportunity where – uh, Norris has to like either freeze it or you know play it, and maybe he'll freeze it, and you'll get an uh, offensive zone draw. And yeah, I mean it'll be uh, interesting to see what Crookson's uh, you know gonna do and uh, what adjustments they're gonna make. And and uh, either way, I mean this is a uh, this is a game that I think uh, our our viewers and uh, the people here in the arena are pleasantly surprised with, and that Crookson is definitely. I mean the goals. I mean one one of the Carson Pilgrim goals very good. I, mean, I can understand. The other one was like then just a little breakdown. Just they wanted that one back. That last one there. Little breakdown, wanted that back, but for the majority of both those periods, Crookson was right there. And and we we're really learning uh, as the season goes on. If you want to beat Parker Kelly, you uh, you got to earn it. You're yeah. not he's not just going to give you anything. And uh, he he's gonna he, he's gonna be you know spectacular performance again. Twenty five saves up to this point. Uh, and just to update the penalty kill, they came into this uh, game. 30 for 35 on the penalty kill, now 32 for 37. 86% penalty kill for Crookston. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's impressive. Yeah, you can definitely hang your head on that. That is a great stat there. Uh, good good quick math there, buddy. Uh, yeah, right in the head, too. Yeah, no, no calculator, right? Absolutely not. <laughs> definitely not, no. <laughs> anyway, no, but, uh, yeah, no, it's just uh, that's just a, a big strength of their of their game. That's something that, again, you, it can help you gain momentum if you can kill those penalties, especially against a power play that I'm assuming – has had a lot of success this year. I don't have their numbers in front of me, but I would assume they're clicking at a high rate, uh, rate with all those talented players on their team. Well, as we close the calculator app, we are going to head to the third period. It's 3 nothing War Road with the lead. We'll step aside and take a break, and then when we come back, we'll have puck drop for the third period here on KROX. Crookston Valley Cooperative in Crookston is your full-service local agronomy dealer delivering the products and services that you've come to expect. Crookston Valley Cooperative specializes in seed, chemical, and fertilizers that you need to keep your farm operation growing. For expert advice you can rely on, give Sean, Mike, or Matt a call at 281-1178 today or stop by at Crookston Valley Cooperative located at 1122 Fairfax Avenue in Crookston. Crookston Valley Co-op, here to keep you growing. With the fall season right around the corner, Grove Mechanical in Crookston is ready to prepare you for winter. They suggest having your heating system serviced regularly to keep things running smoothly. A skilled technician will clean and service your heating equipment to ensure safe and efficient operation. 
It's never too early to get ready for the upcoming winter season before the cold sets in. Call Grove Mechanical today, your hometown heating and cooling professionals. Give them a call, 218-281-3863, or visit their website, grovemech.com. Shopping for groceries is easier than ever with Hugo's Family Marketplace. To simplify life, Hugo's offers convenient online shopping with delivery or curbside pickup at gohugos.com. Even better, shop on the go with the Hugo's Family Marketplace smartphone app. Download e-coupons, recipes, grocery lists, weekly ads, and place your grocery order right from your phone. Save time and save big with Hugo's Family Marketplace, your hometown grocer since 1939. You're going to find more low prices, more great stuff when you go to Hugo's. Are you an enthusiastic sports fan? Want to have fun and get in on the action? Heck, yes, that'd be awesome. Have great attention to detail? Want to stay active? Definitely. Want to give back to the student athletes in your community? Obviously, yes. Then you'd make an excellent high school sports official. We need more officials in Minnesota. Because with no high school officials, there are no high school sports. Sign up today at highschoolofficials.com. From shoulder to hand, hips to toes, and everything in between, the Riverview Health Orthopedic Team has you covered with advanced training and joint replacements, lower extremity, spine, foot, and ankle care. You know you'll be in good hands with Dr. Spinell, Shaw, Yankee, Kim, and Abomance. Call Riverview Clinic at 218-281-9595. Health, exceptional people, exceptional care. Riverview Health. Welcome back to the Crookston Sports Center. Both teams out on the ice here getting ready for the third period as the War Road Warriors have a three to nothing lead heading into period number three. Something we didn't even talk about there in the second period is the period of the long change. Didn't really have much of an effect on that period. You know, I thought about it, but like, you know, we haven't mentioned it so far. Let's just not mention it and yeah. see what happens. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's the thing. Yeah, as you said, it, it didn't really affect anything. Guys weren't, you know... I mean, if they were in their own zone for too long, they didn't seem too too gassed. And, and as the clock winds down here, five seconds before we get things rolling. It'll be Edwards and Pilgrim once again to begin the period in the face-off circle. And tied up once again. Pilgrim able to prevail and sends it back. It'll be Hardwick trying to get it to Lund, and now full head of steam. It's Marvin Cordes. Cuts to the middle. His shot goes just wide. Able to keep it in is Lund. It's a down now. Hamry banks it off the boards. Back for Lipinski. Lipinski is going to be harassed there, and now Marvin Cordes comes out with it. Threw it off the back of the cage. Now it's Lipinski. He'll circle all the way around. Goes around the net. Lipinski still going with it and loses it. Now Trudeau lost it. It's Marvin Cordes. Tough angle shot, that one's saved. No one was there for, for War Road, and this one nearly hit the scoreboard. It'll be gloved down by Hontvit. Goes off the skate of Pilgrim, still kept in. Pilgrim from a tough angle, and that one was saved. He was below the goal line when he attempted that one. Pilgrim drops it off. Hontvit with the shot, that one skipped to Kelly. Good eyes there as he was able to track it the whole way. Hopped on top of it, just a minute and three seconds into period number three. That was a good weird uh, <laughs> bounce there, good reaction from Kelly, but I'm just more shocked about that uh, that shot from Pilgrim below the, the goal line. That's a Danny Heatley type of shot. Yeah, that's uh, he, he was trying to go from the rock star zone, <laughs> and uh, that just goes to show what kind of talent he has as that one is fought off by Kelly. That comes off of its moorings, and a tough angled shot this time from Anthony. To go back to Pilgrim, we've already, we've already seen his excellent hands. Uh, you know, we saw him really commanding the power play too. Two goals in the first period, saw him do it one even strength, shorthanded as well, and uh, and then showing it off there, the one timer from the corner. Here's a one timer that just missed the net. Kelly had to stretch out for that one, and Lund got some good lumber on that one, but it goes just wide. We've seen uh, we've seen a couple of good shots from Lund as well. In the corner, it's hard. Sends it back, and it'll be Benson who comes out with it. Benson comes out to center. Benson gets into the offensive zone, works his way around. Lund threw it into the middle. Fisher, now it's Ecker. Backhander, that one sails high. Over to the near side for Benson. He threw one on net, and a lot of traffic there, and Lubinsky blew an edge, and it's going to be a two on zero. 
breakaway. Now it's Shogaby. Sends it across. They score. Dominic Anthony with the goal, and it's 4 0. Yeah, I mean, just unfortunate there. I mean, obviously, uh, a blown tire as uh, Lubinsky goes down there, and 2 <laughs> 0. I mean, uh, as, Park, as good as Parker Kelly's been, he's, he, I mean, he was hung out to dry, to say the least, and can't make that one. So, 4 0, and not the greatest start the Pirates wanted to this period, but hopefully they can uh, correct things and, and get back uh, right. That was a test, textbook way to utilize the 2 on 0 breakaway, too, by, uh, by both Shogaby and Anthony. As Anthony was able to bury it, and it's now 4 0 War Road as Pirates quickly into their end, and it will be Sunderland who will have to stop and send it across. Gets this to Grappentine. Throw it across into the corner, and now it's Slabinski. Slabinski will. Flip this one down to center, and it'll go back for Grappentine, who will go right in front of Norris and sends it across. This one goes off of the skate of Sunderland. It'll go all the way down for an icing. 14.37 left here in the third, and this is a you know pretty big moment here in the third period, at least uh, for the Pirates. Got to win the faceoff. I was just going to say, you know, win the faceoff here, just get a fire shot on net. That's the biggest thing right now. I mean, they had a, a, a good uh, little drive down the, down the ice earlier, Get, had a weird pass, didn't get a shot on net, and, you know, just get some shots on. That's really what I think would be a good start. And ask and you shall receive. Face-off win from Edwards Street with the quick shot. Norris with the save, and they'll do it again from Norris's left. All right, just get a goal here then. <laughs> <laughs> I can try, but uh, no, I mean, that's, that's good. I mean, you got to get those shots going, and good things will happen. Off the faceoff, now it's Melsha, his shot that's blocked, and Benson unable to keep it in as that took a deflection, and now it's James up ahead. James is gonna be chased down there by Edwards. Edwards hit from behind by Marvin Cordes. He'll, Edwards heads down to the ice, still trying to make the play as this is gonna get thrown, goes off of Marvin Cordes, and now it's Edwards going up the other way. Edwards with the shot, that was blocked, went right to, off of Trudeau's skate, and now it will be James. James with the shot, that's blocked. Good shot block from Hamry as James burrows in after it. Flipped out by Street. This one will be played at center by Pilgrim. Pilgrim leaves it for Marvin Cordes. He'll walk in, and that shot is going to take a deflection, goes off into the corner. Pirates send it down. Didn't go all the way down for icing as Lund was able to claim it. Sends it for Hauntfit. Hauntfit will turn and wait with it and sends it up ahead a little too far for Pilgrim, and Puck is going to be touched up, but it's going to be a penalty called on Crookston. Another tripping call here. So it'll be Fisher called for a second trip. So it'll be War Road on the power play, third time tonight. They've been on the power play 0 for 2 are the Warriors. Henham is able to win the faceoff, goes back to Lund. Sent on the far side now for Anthony. It's another save made by Kelly as they battle for it. And net was knocked off of its mooring, so that's why the referee blew his whistle. So 10 seconds into the power play. We'll do it again from Parker Kelly's left. Jackson Reese able to win the faceoff for Crookson as in the corner, they'll battle for it. The War Road coming out with it as Anthony. Behind the cage, sends it to Shogaby. Shogaby cross ice, they score! Roden Hauntfit able to score, and he gets it on the power play. It's 5 0 War Road. Well, just thinking too, I mean, you can't keep on giving this uh, War Road power play the opportunity, and on the power play, they're going to beat you eventually. And yeah, just a beautiful cross ice seam pass. Uh, uh, um, west, east to west, and you know it's an easy backdoor tap in for the Warriors, who are just really, I mean, the Pirates again hung in there for two periods. Now it looks like they've uh, might have started to run out of gas here. Face off win for Akis. and there's a save. <laughs> that was the post. <laughs> Looks like we're getting a penalty, though. It will be Sunderland who heads 
to the box. I don't know if that was, yeah, I don't know if that's like an unsportsmanlike. Did the, the I tea. didn't see. I didn't see another call, so I'm guessing that's unsportsmanlike is what my guess would be. Well, what we do know is that Crookston is gonna head to the power play. So that's the second unsportsmanlike that we've seen. So here's Edwards at the blue line. And is harassed there by Marvin Cordes. He comes out with the steal and another save made by Kelly. That one goes into the netting and out of play. Yeah, Kelly, good, good positioning there and makes the big save. So two unsportsmanlike penalties here on War Road. That's the only two penalties that they've had this game. And again, I... I didn't see anything that would have resembled it. So well, it's well. Uh, I mean, it was well away yeah. from the play. That's the thing. So I mean, it's uh, that's definitely something that Coach Hardwick is going to want to address because uh, can't be having that. So here's Lund. Now on the near side, he'll head up ice with it. Another save made by Kelly. Hontvit on the far boards. Three Pirates are there trying to dig it out. He'll come back for Lund. Lund shot that one nearly gloved down by Kelly. He has to jump and cover. 108 left on the power play. 12.01 left here in the third. So it'll be another face off in the War Road zone. It'll be to the left of Kelly. It'll be Pilgrim and Edwards. Minute eight left here on the man advantage for Crookston. 33 saves for Parker Kelly, five saves for Norris. Now up ice, Trudeau had it knocked off his stick and Edwards trying to chase down Marvin Cordes and he'll spin up ice. Marvin Cordes will now exit his own zone, goes back to center, killing off precious time on the power play. Still going with this, cuts to the middle, turns and fires a shot, saved by Kelly, was loose in the crease and just trickled wide of the net. Now Lubinsky had it stolen from behind by Pilgrim. Up ahead for Hontvit. Hontvit had that one knocked away by Kelly. Now it'll be Ecker. Ecker will retreat and start up ice. Just under half a minute left on the power play. As Puck was spiked up into the air and now Jay Reese had it for a moment. It'll be Lund and offside is called. 11.06 left here in the third. 13 seconds left on the power play for Crookston. 5-0 the lead for War Road. Yeah, the, the Warriors really having their way, doing pretty much whatever they want with the puck besides putting it in the net there at the end there. They've uh, really been just controlling this uh, power play. That, well, it's a penalty kill, but it feels like a power play for them. This one's going to be sent in. Goes down for Benson. Benson goes around, gets it to Ecker. Now it's Fisher. Fisher will head up, ice goes into the middle as Warro kills off the power play. So we're back to full strength. And a dangerous pass, that one was sent out into the middle, actually went off the stick of Norris. And it will be Shogaby who will head up ice. Boy, Warro was lucky there wasn't a pirate out in front because that one could have been set up for Crookston, but it's gonna be Anthony the other way, tried to send it back, this one Behind Hontvit, and he'll have to go back to center. Drops it off for Hart. Now Hontvit. Up ahead goes off of Shogaby, and now it's Melsha. Melsha will send it in. He'll head to the bench to make a change. As Hontvit puts the brakes on, reverses and sends it to the near side. Anthony with the nice move. Anthony's still going with it, and offside is called. Now well, Warriors taking... Too many moves. <laughs> it was a nice move right there, but shouldn't make a move at the blue line and get another offside. And again, that's just some things that, you know, Warhol obviously playing a lot of confidence right now, but get a little too cocky, you make some mistakes that are definitely avoidable. 10 minutes left here in the third and still off the draw. That'll be Warroad who'll just flip it in and Lubinsky heads back and he'll send this one out into the stands. <laughs> and that one is going to be a souvenir. 
Although the fans decided to throw it back into play as the referee just came to the near side to grab a new puck. So 9.47 left. It'll be a face-off to Kelly's left. It'll be Scapel and Larson in the face-off circle still tied up once again. And puck is loose. Larson trying to get to it first. Sunderland was there as well for Warroad. It's kept in Hauntvit. Just inside the blue line, turns and fires a shot high and wide. This one's going to go all the way down. Mason Reed, who'll chase this one down in his own end. He'll head up ice. Reed's still going with this, carrying quite a bit of speed. He'll go end to end before he is met there by Hamry. Now Larson turns and spins, takes a big hit. Hamry behind his own net, puts the brakes on. Has to send it along for Miller. Miller on the near side, Hamry there as well. Sunderland comes out with it, gets this over to Lean. But comes out now for Sunderland at the top. He'll fire a shot, that one hit off the crossbar. Another post hit and that one goes out. Now it's Lean. It's behind the net, threw one off the back of the cage, went right back to him. Now Jackson Reese had it for a moment and spinning with a quick shot is Scapel and Kelly able to come up with his 35th save of the game. Yeah, he just keeps on uh, being in position there, and he's uh, well, he's got to go left to right a lot as the Warriors have been, you know, either going behind the net or just having some good cross-ice passes. But Parker Kelly has been doing a good job as of late to get in good position. Off the face-off win. Larson sent it along. Fourth line out there for the Pirates. Bouchow sent it forward, didn't get it all the way out. Nice move and a shot, they score! Marvin Cordes with the goal, and it's six to nothing. Well, just another uh, cross-ice pass, good move, and well, found the back of the net, and another goal for the Warriors. So it's Murray Marvin Cordes who scores. Making it 6 0, and it's a face off win for Pilgrim. So he's going to be sent up ahead. Now it's Melsha going up ice with this. He'll flip this one forward. Another assist for Tavin James. That's his third assist of the game. As it's Lund. Up ice. Now it's Marvin Cordes. Another shot, a save made by Kelly. Bouchow is there, and he will get it out of his own end. And Marvin Cordes will throw it now onto the near side, gets this to James. James will drop it back. Rappentine lost it. Puck is loose, and Lund will have to chase it down. Trudeau is there harassing him. He's going to get sent down, and it will be an icing here. Seven. 25 and change left here in the third period. Six to nothing is the lead for War Road. And with a six goal lead in the third period, running time has been uh, implemented. So even though there's an icing and a stop to play, you will see the clock continue to wind down. Face off win for Edwards as it's Trudeau sending it into the corner. Huntvit is there, now it's Edwards. Adam is there as well for War Road. Puck comes out and it'll be up the ice for Anthony. Anthony on the near side, sends it across. They score! And looks like a penalty has just been called as well. I'm guessing. So, guessing that was unsportsmanlike. I don't. Again, yeah, I don't know. that that came that came <laughs> after the goal was scored. It was Shogaby who scored. I mean, well, Edwards was on the bench when he got pulled back out. So, so we'll have to check on the penalty. But either way, it is seven to nothing. Warroad with the lead. This one's going to be flipped all the way down. So another unsportsmanlike conduct penalty called. This time it's on the Pirates. It's their fourth penalty of the game. 
Warroad with the man advantage here with 5.50 left and counting. Lund on the far side. On the far side, it's Anthony who just picked up an assist. Another point for Anthony on the evening. Back down low, goes back to Anthony. Lund calling for it at the top. Will throw it across. Hanfit with the shot, a save made. And puck is loose and in the corner. It was Anthony who came up with it and that one was sent out into the middle and knocked away by Larson. Anthony sends it to the back for Lund. Now Anthony walks and spins and drops it back for Lund. Lund with the shot. That one was blocked out in front. Never got all the way to Kelly. Lund has that back, sends it over. Anthony winds up one-timer safe. Scramble out in front, and that one also goes wide. Shogaby drops it off now for Anthony. Kelly lost his stick in the process. Now it heads back for Hantvik. And stoppage in play as the net was knocked off its moorings. Was I imagining things? Did he try the Michigan? <laughs> thought I saw a stick. I thought I saw a stick go up there, so that's why I was. Well, we'll have to go on, on replay as there's another penalty that just got assessed to Crookston. Yeah, on Sportsmanlike yet again. So this time that was to, uh, I believe, Ty Larson, I think I saw 18. You want to double check for me? No, it was eight. That's what yeah, it, was. it was. Grayson, Grayson Ecker. Ecker. Yep. So fifth penalty on the Pirates. It's a 7-0 lead for War Road coming up on four minutes left here in the third. So here's Lund. Shot, that one gets knocked off into the corner. Sunderland from a tough angle, and once again, the net comes off. It's moorings, and... Let's uh, check, the, check those moorings, then. This is getting a little ridiculous. Yeah, it's on the... The same net, too, yeah, so exactly. that's, that's interesting. Didn't have any of those problems in the second period when Kelly was over where Norris is right now. Three and a half minutes left here in the third. 7-0 War Road with the lead. They've scored four goals here in this third period. On the far side, Sunderland. Takes the body there. That one's going to be Tempted to be bashed around by Melsha. He'll throw it back, but it goes right to Lean. Scramble for it. Kelly, and the net is loose once again. Getting well, a little chippy here, too. Yeah, a little bit of uh, conversations taking place between the two sides. As again, the referees will fix the net temporarily, at least. <laughs> About half a minute left here on the power play. 2.45 left here in the game. Number two, War Road on top, and it'll be frozen by Kelly. We get a whistle, not for the moorings. That's a nice change of pace. Both teams will make a change. So it'll be Colburn who will come out now into the faceoff circle for Crookston, and... Now we get a stoppage. Another ice frozen, so our puck's frozen. There's Drayden Johnson out there for War Road. And he has it, and fan on the shot. Johnson still going with it, sends it back. And Hanfit threw one, and it nearly went in, but it was saved there as it was Cannon Hoffman who's on the ice for the first time for War Road. This one sent around. Pirates come out with it as it's Ecker coming up the near side, trying a couple of moves. Now it's Street sending it down low. No one is there, and it's going to be Reed sending it back for Hantvit. Hantvit with the far pass, too strong, and it'll be Lubinsky. Lubinsky got it back, and now Lubinsky will head up ice. Let's get on the near side, drops off for Street, threw one out in front, tried to get it to Bao Chow, went just behind him. And we'll keep this one in as Akis, as now it's Hamry. And that one took a couple of deflections. Norris had to keep a close eye on that as a minute is to go here in the third. Seven to nothing the lead for the number two War Road Warriors. As Hamry on the back check, able to force it free, and Hamry heads up ice. 
Emery still going with it on the near side. Emery threw in a cross looking for Miller. That one was just in front of Miller and now will be Lund. Lund going upward with it. Knocked off the puck by Akis. Big hit in the corner. That was a big hit coming from Lean. Now a centering opportunity, no one was there. Lund winds up, save made. Big save made by Kelly. Now in the corner, it's gonna be Scapple. Here's Sunderland. Now back for Hard, his shot blocked out in front. Another save made by Kelly, and they score! It was Kyler Lean who scores here in the last couple of seconds in the game, and it'll be 8-0. We'll have to see if anyone's going to get credit for the assist, but War Road, they're going to take this one 8-0. Here, just as time expires. So it's 8-0 War Road with the victory. And that is how this one comes to a close. So we'll step aside, take a break, and then we'll have our post-game show coming up right after this here on KROX. It's always growing season here at United Valley Bank. We're focused on growth for our customers and communities, success for farms and businesses, and improvement for ourselves. Partner with us and you'll see firsthand just how much the right hometown banking team can change your perspective. Together, there's no limit to the heights we can reach. United Valley Bank, our roots make us stronger. Member FDIC, an equal housing lender. Hello, this is Lindsay Erdman, Executive Director at Benedictine Living Community Crookston. Over the years, we have seized the opportunity to make changes and improve the services that we offer. Healthcare has taken on a very distinct evolution, focusing on post-acute short stay and return to home. It is our privilege to continue to serve our community with a continuum of care ranging from assisted living, memory care, post-acute short stay, and extended care. We are so grateful for the support of Crookston and the surrounding communities. In this season of giving and reflection, please know how very proud Benedict and Living Community of Crookston is to serve our community. Farming today doesn't always feel the same way it used to. Then again, some of it feels all the same. Maybe it isn't so much the jobs that changed, but how they get done. Now that's a different story. Efficiencies are critical is why you need a lender who will find the right loan structure for a strong financial future. You need a lender to look out for your whole farm operation. Ag Country. For all of your automotive service needs, call Christian Brothers Ford here in Crookston. We have a service team to handle all of your vehicle's needs. Does your vehicle pull to the right or left? Call and schedule an alignment today. Proper alignment saves gas and wear on your tires. We're here to take care of your vehicle repairs and maintenance. Call Christopher or Jersey in the service department at 281-1338. Make an appointment today with the service department at Christian Brothers Ford of Crookston, where we make it easy. This is my farm. Don't come out here and tell me what I need. I need solutions that work and market options that are worth my time. Small town support that sees the bigger picture. A global network that empowers us. A co-op that's there for us every day. Welcome back to the Crookston Sports Center as we begin our post-game show here on KROX. It is the War Road Warriors getting an 8-0 victory over the Crookston Pirates 
as it would be War Road who advances now to 13 and 3 on the season. They improve to 5 and 1 on the road as well. Crooks and they are going to drop now to 7 and 6 on the year. As uh, we take a look at our draft sports bar and grill scoreboard update. Uh, also, uh, earlier today, it was the Crooks and Pirates uh, varsity girls team uh, in action here on the ice. It was a doubleheader that we had right here as the uh, Pirates, they were able to get a 4-1 to one win over East Grand Forks in that one. So uh, here on Hockey Fights Cancer Evening, it was a great showing, a lot of money that was raised here this evening. And let's see what the other scores were in the JV Boys game. War Road, they won that one 8-1. to one. In boys basketball, Hawley, they won 48 to 33 in the JV game. And in the C game, C squad game, it was Hawley with a 48 to 14 victory there. In wrestling, the Crooks and Pirates there at the Mayville Portland Quadrangular this evening. Hillsborough Central Valley defeated Crooks in 38 to 24. Carrington, they defeated Crooks in 48 to 27. And Crookston, they won. It was 31 31 against Mayville Portland, but Crookston got the win. Uh, via criteria as they had fewer forfeit losses. So that was a uh, just a brief little look here at our Draft Sports Bar and Grill scoreboard update as trying to see if there are any other final scores from around the area that we can pass along. Uh, in girls basketball, Park Christian, they defeated Ada Borup West 55-53. to Kellier Northam, they defeated Nevis 57-35. And Cass Lake Bina, they knocked off Black Duck 76 to 57. In other scores, trying to see if there are any other final scores. Again, this is in girls basketball. And from our area, trying to see if there were anything else that we can pass along. Fergus Falls, they defeated Breckenridge 62 to 48. Winnie Mac, they defeat Fertile Bell Tramie in a close one, 45 to 43. Seeing if there are any other scores from around the area. Managa, they defeat Browerville Eagle Valley 74 to 25. That one is final. And some other final scores. Sox Center, they defeat Barnesville 78 to 63. Again, these are girls basketball scores as we're awaiting for Coach Hardy to come on up and do his post-game interview. And East Grand Forks, they take down Dilworth, Glendon, Felton, 64-57. As we head over to the boys' side, see if there are any boys' final scores that we can pass along. And on the boys' basketball scene, Perham, they defeat Breckenridge, 82-39. And Staples Motley, they defeat Frazee, 76-72. That's about it. In single A, see if there's anything else that we can pass along. That really looks like about it for the area as of right now for final scores. Barnesville, they defeat Pelican Rapids 71 to 51. And final score for the Crooks and Boys, Hawley, they won 57 to 45 over the Pirates. We had that one on the radio side. As uh, Staples Motley, they defeated Frazee 76 72. I believe I said that one already. Let's see if there are any uh, hockey scores tonight. Uh, Mayport, they defeated Bagley Faustin 5 2 in boys hockey. Bagley Faustin is going to be Crookston's next opponent a week from today. We'll have that here on the uh, KROX live stream uh, a week from today. And Fergus Falls, they defeat St. Cloud 5-4. to four. And I think that really is about it in boys hockey. And again, the Crooks and Pirates, they won 4-1 to one over East Grand Forks earlier as we had that one on our KROX YouTube page. And we will we'll step aside and take a break. We'll wait for Coach Hardy to come on up here. We'll have his interview and more coming up as our post-game show continues here on KROX. Ever wonder what your city government does for you? They provide police and fire protection, emergency and disaster preparation, building code and zoning enforcement, street repair, cleaning and snow plowing, curbside garbage and recycling collection, plus spring and fall cleanup weeks. 
They deliver safe drinking water and maintain a wastewater system. They care for 22 parks and provide year-round recreation activities. They give loans for economic development and housing. They do all this and much more with the help of your city employees. Hi, I'm Dr. Angie Smith, optometrist to the Crookston Eye Clinic and Foston Eye Clinic. We aim to provide high quality products to our patients, things that we use ourselves in treating our own dry eye or coatings that we like to use on our own glasses. We offer myopia control contact lenses for children, which are soft contacts that not only correct their vision, but are designed to slow the progression of their nearsightedness. The eyes lead the body, and we are passionate about helping the eyes be safer, sharper, and faster. Crookston High School, we really have a lot going on. There isn't that much going on. Oh yeah? We have softball, baseball, track, field, soccer, swimming, tennis, golf, volleyball, crap shooting, hockey, basketball, wrestling. So we have a lot of sports. And there is orchestra, band, choir, visual arts, speech, theater, wheel club. And Crookston is one of the highest academic schools in the region. Really? Yeah, really, especially in math and science. I guess we do have a lot of going on. Yeah, and that's why Crookston High School is my, my education, education destination. destination. Crookston Valley Cooperative in Crookston is your full-service local agronomy dealer delivering the products and services that you've come to expect. Crookston Valley Cooperative specializes in seed, chemical, and fertilizers that you need to keep your farm operation growing. For expert advice you can rely on, give Sean, Mike, or Matt a call at 281-1178 today or stop by at Crookston Valley Cooperative, located at 1122 Fairfax Avenue in Crookston. Crookston Valley Co-op, here to keep you growing. With the fall season right around the corner, Grove Mechanical in Crookston is ready to prepare you for winter. They suggest having your heating system serviced regularly to keep things running smoothly. A skilled technician will clean and service your heating equipment to ensure safe and efficient operation. It's never too early to get ready for the upcoming winter season. Before the cold sets in, call Grove Mechanical today, your hometown heating and cooling professionals. Give them a call, 218-281-3863, or visit their website, grovemech.com. Shopping for groceries is easier than ever with Hugo's Family Marketplace. To simplify life, Hugo's offers convenient online shopping with delivery or curbside pickup at GoHugos.com. Even better, shop on the go with the Hugo's Family Marketplace smartphone app. Download e-coupons, recipes, grocery lists, weekly ads, and place your grocery order right from your phone. Save time and save big with Hugo's Family Marketplace, your hometown grocer since 1939. You're going to find more low prices, more great stuff. When you go to Hugo's. Are you an enthusiastic sports fan? Want to have fun and get in on the action? Heck yes, that'd be awesome. Have great attention to detail? Want to stay active? Definitely. Want to give back to the student athletes in your community? Obviously, yes. Then you'd make an excellent high school sports official. <laughs> we need more officials in Minnesota. Because with no high school officials, there are are no high school sports. Sign up today at highschoolofficials.com. From shoulder to hand, hips to toes, and everything in between. The Riverview Health Orthopedics with advanced training and joint replacements, upper and lower extremity, spine, foot, and ankle will be in good hands with Dr. Spinell, Shaw, Secundiac, Stanky, Kim, and Abasi. For appointments, call Riverview Clinic at 218-281-9595. Riverview Health, exceptional people, exceptional care, Riverview Health. Welcome back to the Crookston Sports Center. Eight to nothing, the score is the number two War Road Warriors get the win on the road. They take down the Crookston at Pirates. And, uh, well, Bo, uh, we were talking about it in the break. First two periods for Crookston looked very good. And then War Road, they really showed their skill in the third. Yeah, I mean uh, the the Pirates. I would say if they if you <laughs> this was a two period game, you only lost three nothing. They would be uh, uh, static right now. But unfortunately, that third period is part of the game. And yeah, Warlord really uh, turned it on. I think uh, you know again. I think they came into this game thinking it was gonna be like the third period the entire time. And you know, Crookson showed them that hey, you know they they've improved and you know they're not gonna just lay over or roll over right away. And and uh, you know it. it uh, Give credit to World again. Yeah, they have the skill. They have the players that are you know D1 commits and and all that. And they're I mean they're very very a very good team. That's why they're number two in the state. But Crookson hung on hung around for a while. You know three nothing after two periods. I don't think anybody um, up in Warroad probably would have thought that was going to be the score afterwards. Even some, probably some people in Crookston. So uh, yeah, I mean 
they played very well. I mean, and again, just a couple goals that were just little mishaps, and and the War Road Warriors took advantage of it in those first out of those first three goals, and then. Um, I think, yeah, they turned it on. Emotions maybe got a little bit better of the Pirates as well as uh, a couple of unsportsmanlike con uh, penalties uh, in the later part of the game. And, you know, just uh, it's tough. But, hey, that's uh, that, that's what happens. And you got to uh, take some things to learn from it. And I'm sure we'll hear that from Coach Hardy here in a little bit once he makes his way up here. Uh, one positive, uh, I suppose, is uh, Parker Kelly, 43 <laughs> saves. Uh, once again, Parker Kelly, excellent job in that. And a lot of the goals that uh, – were scored tonight. Crookson really had to earn those, as I believe we have Coach Hardy, who is trying to work his way into the press box. So it's uh, we'll be now joined here on our post game show by Coach Hardy. And so once the uh, once the mic turns on here, as a <laughs> coach, it was a uh, it's eight to nothing. The victory for War Road here on. Home ice as now we are joined by Coach Hardy here as uh, eight nothing was the final score. What were your overall thoughts on your team's performance, though? Yeah, I mean that's that's the number two team in the state without a question. Maybe the number one team in the state. I thought uh, they were they were excellent tonight. They were really good in transition. I thought we we executed a game plan for about two periods, and uh, in the third there just got to be a little bit too much uh, too much for us to handle. And they they were they had some opportunistic goals. Uh, and we just didn't quite have an answer for for that tonight. But that's I was really I was really pleased. You know, going into the the third period, three to zero, really uh, could have been two to zero. They score on us late. You know, two uh, thirty seconds left in the in the second there, and uh, we we really did what we what we wanted to do. Find ourselves in a game into the third period. We talked about that pregame. Is that hey, we got to try to find ourselves in in this opportunity to you know we get a bounce right. And now we're in a hockey game similar to the Thief River Falls, and, and we did a nice job. I thought executing uh, executing that game plan for two periods. I was really really proud of uh, the way that we did that. We proved tonight that hey, we can we can hang with with some of the better teams in in, in the state. Uh, you know, but we just it was it was a little too much for us in the third period. We ran out of gas. And uh, again, credit to Wara. That's that's one heck of a hockey team right there. What were the what was the message and what were the vibes in between the first and second period and then the second and third period? Yeah. Because you talked about briefly how, uh, you know, the first two periods, you guys really yeah, played well. I mean, we felt good. And I think that unfortunately, I think that makes it hurt a little bit more. The the final score, we talk about not worrying too much about the outcome or the or the total. Right. Um, but it was. Uh, yeah, we felt good. We felt like we were doing what we needed to do. Uh, you know, we had a couple opportunities to shoot the puck when we could have and we, er, er, and get it on net, and, and we struggled a little bit there. But no, I mean, it was everybody was feeling good. Like, hey, we're we're in a hockey game here against the number two team in the state. So it was uh, obviously the vibes were pretty good, and uh, unfortunate that that it ended the way that it did. But uh, really, really proud of our our effort tonight. Parker Kelly again making save oh. after save after save. He's really been an anchor for your team all season. Yeah, you know, I mean, he's he's been so good, and he's probably the guy that's beating himself up the most right now uh, because it's. I mean, he <laughs> he was so good again tonight, uh, especially in those first two periods, right? Like he he made a ton of saves. He was all over the ice. He was. I thought he did a really job managing the game flow tonight, covering pucks, uh, deflecting pucks out when he could, and uh, yeah, I mean, just uh, the kids playing some great hockey right now, and and we need it. Uh, you, you know, obviously it's going to sting, uh, you know, the, the third period probably stings the most. Is that a fair, fair yeah. thing to say? Yeah, right. Like, I don't, I mean, for me, I, I, I'm i not too worried about it. But I know for, for those high school kids, we talked a little bit about, hey, you only got about, a, I mean, you only got about a month, half, month and a half if you're lucky of this, if you're a senior. And uh, unfortunately, with the highs come the lows, right? Uh, so it's, uh, you're not going to, in a month and a half, you don't get to feel this anymore. So uh, as much as it's not very fun, you're, you're still playing high school hockey and, and you're still a part of it. And uh, they're, they're frustrated. They, you know, they thought that they were in a game and, and just didn't, they kind of, you know, got overpowered in the third period there. But uh, yeah, it was, uh, like I said, I, I told them, I, I said, I wasn't sure how we would respond tonight, how we would, how we would react to a, a, a very, very good good hockey team we haven't haven't had to been we haven't been tested by our very very good hockey team uh much this season outside of really thief river falls so uh it was uh it was good for us tonight and and again i said we we looked like a hockey team tonight we looked like we could compete the final score notwithstanding i thought that uh for two periods we hung right in there with the number two team in the state and that's a really good accomplishment, even to do that for the first two periods <laughs> to come out. And you talked about how important it was to, you know, get a good start. 
yeah, you did give up a, a goal within the first three <sighs> minutes, but after that, you're able to to weather we the did, storm. And you we don't let it uh, yeah, overcome things. And we did exactly what we talked about, uh, what we needed to do there. Carter came out. He, he was right on Lund, and uh, it just uh, unfortunately it hit his stick and uh, went five hole on Parker. So uh, we did what we were needed to do, and that was a bad bounce. And again, that that was that first goal was a was a tough break for us. And then uh, I think what the the third goal was a tough break too. We we uh, Street got a stick on that one too, and uh, it went in uh, went through the wickets on uh, on Parker there so you know again we uh, I thought it was it was fun tonight because we I thought we really executed what we talked about <laughs> we only had a day to practice it really because um, the way that we're going to play against Bagley is going to be much different than the way that we're going to play against War Road uh, just sort of the nature of the beast and uh, you know we man top to bottom we really got her done tonight uh, for, for uh, the better portion of that game. It'll be a week off, so yeah. you'll you'll have some time to here, practice. Right? Yeah, time to rest as well. What are you going to be working on at practice? <sighs> yeah, you know, it was, uh, you know, tomorrow, uh, even like, it's funny, in the third period, they're talking about it on the bench of what we need to do at practice tomorrow. And, you know, getting the puck out of our zone under pressure is, is something big for us and, and how we how we handle um, some of that pressure and, and still get the puck out of our zone with numbers. Uh, you know, so that's, that's one big thing. And, and then, you know, I think just even looking back to, to – Thir or Tuesday, um, and and Thursday before that, we I think we've struggled to really find the back of the net. So, uh, you know, getting a little more battle drills next week probably. Uh, you know, getting getting net front and trying to bury some rebounds and, and get some shots through from the point. Uh, that's going to be sort of our our focus here. And then continued. I thought I mean, uh, I power or penalty kill tonight, man, was was outstanding. Uh, they did a great job. Uh, again operating a little differently than we normally do because of how they set up. That was something that we literally put in today before the game, and, and they came out there and uh, did a really nice job against a power play that's clicking at almost 30% on the year. So uh, we'll get some special team stuff in. We'll, we're going to mix some guys in, and, and obviously it's uh, it's a couple of days of practice. Then we got Bagley and, and uh, again, another high-powered offense, maybe not quite as high-powered as uh, uh, the War Road Warriors in, in Little Falls on Saturday. So a, a big week coming up for us. Uh, obviously, you know quite a bit about Bagley. We just saw them uh, yep. with you on Tuesday. Uh, Little Falls, again, you just mentioned on Saturday. So what are you expecting out of both of those games? I mean, two really good games. I thought Bagley gave us all we can handle there for a while. Their goalie played outstanding. And then Little Falls on Saturday, we got to get on the bus and, and, and drive a ways. And uh, they've got some high-end talent. Uh, but we're have, uh, struggling to score a little bit. So it's uh, it'll be interesting. Uh, but uh, Hanowski is a great coach and a great guy and uh, carrying on the legacy of Tony Kuchar there uh, in, in Little Falls. So I'm excited for that. Uh, it's going to be a, a good week. Obviously, like this one stings a little, but we're going to be back at work tomorrow. The sun's going to come up. Hopefully we get uh, we don't get the, a snow nami here and <laughs> we'll uh, we'll be back at it. And, and tonight I, I said to the boys too, like regardless of win, loss, we, we won tonight. And I said, it's going to take you guys 10, 20 years, because it, it's hard for me to really, really imagine uh, or really understand what we did for somebody else tonight. You know, we're, we're closing in on almost $30,000 raised for Danny Sylvester and her family, which is just an, a, an incredible number. Um, and, you know, we as I'm, I'm just so proud of, of the Crookston community and how they came together to, to help somebody in need. Um, and that's what small towns are all about. So I was I was just uh, blown away by the support uh, of our community. And we had a great night at the rink here. It was packed uh, two good hockey or four good hockey games. Uh, and it was uh, it makes you it makes you pretty proud to be from Crookston. I uh, couldn't have said it any better, Coach. It was an excellent night. Uh, Hockey Fights Cancer Night tonight and uh, astounding numbers that the community <laughs> was able to donate uh, and just goes to show how generous everyone is here. Yeah, it, it's it's again, it's it's wild. I, it's just such a blessing, and, and like you said, it, it makes you proud to be from here, and, and it's uh, it's such a good place to, to raise your kids, right? So uh, proud to be from Crookston. Obviously not the outcome that we wanted tonight, but we'll be back to work tomorrow. And I guess one last positive thing, you're still above 500 on the season hey, two. Right, right. Let's take that. Uh, no, it's uh, it's been good. It's it's this. I said to the boys in there too. I, I've had so much fun coaching this team this year. Uh, they said after practice yesterday, like they just come, they work hard, they have a good time, um, and then and they do things the right way. So again, proud of them tonight. And it was uh, it was a uh, it was a good night of hockey. We, we're going to take a lot of positives from this, and and we'll be back to work like I said tomorrow. I promise this is the last one All right, for you. Got? Uh, one last one, on I here. promise. Uh, uh, halfway through the season, what yeah. have you learned about this team? I mean, uh, I think a lot, right? I, like I said, I we are a team that can compete. We're going to be a team that's going to be a tough outcome playoff time. Nobody's going to want to play us. 
Uh, so I'm uh, I'm excited uh, I'm excited about that, right? Uh, we weren't really sure. I wasn't I wasn't positive what what sort of team we were gonna have this year, how things were gonna kind of click and gel together. We've but this team has been. Um, closer than any that we've had in, in the last couple of years just top to bottom one through 20 one through 40 really with all of our guys um and that's that makes it that makes it fun so it's a it's a it's a great group of kids they they work really hard they're smart they're they're kind they they care uh, about each other about winning and losing about doing all the things the right way and uh you know it's just uh i've learned that it's uh you know we're we're going to be a hockey team <laughs> for lack of a better term we're we're a hockey team and, and again like we showed tonight against you know arguably one of the best teams in the state that we can we can hang in there thank you very much for joining us coach now you can take off the headset all righty thank you <laughs> so that was coach hardy with his thoughts here as war road gets the win 8 to nothing as uh, i believe we have one last draft sports bar and grill scoreboard update to get to i saw some more final scores that were posted. So, Bo, I'll uh, send it over to you for uh, one final time this evening. Yeah, for sure. So, once again, girls hockey won here 4-1. Uh, boys hockey, as we just mentioned, uh, World won 8-0. And the JV game, World won 8-1. Didn't get a score for the uh, girls' JV game, so we'll have to look into that. Anyway, boys basketball at Holly. Holly won, won the varsity game 57-45. JV, Holly won 48-33. C-Squad, Holly won 48-14. Crooks and wrestling at the Mayville Portland Quadrangular. Hillsborough Central Valley would defeat Crooks in 38 to 24. Carrington over uh, Crooks in 48 to 27. Crooks and Mayville Portland draw 31 uh, 31, but then Crooks and wins by criteria, fewer forfeit losses. Some other girls basketball around the area: Winnemac over Fernville Tram in a close game, 45 to 43. Sacred Heart over Faustin, 55 to 45. East Grand Forks over Dilworth Glen and Felton, 64 to 57. Badger Greenwich Middle River over Goodridge Grigla, 71 to 38. Park Christian squeaks by Ada Bort Bless, 55 to 53. Uh, Monaga over Browerville, 74 to 25. In uh, Sox Center over Barnesville, 78 to 63. Cass Lake Bina and Black Duck, close game here. Actually, no, not so close. I misread that. Cass Lake Bina defeats uh, Black Duck, uh, 76 to 57. North Home Kellier over Nevis, 57 to 35. Few boys basketball games. Faustin defeats Bagley, 57 to 43. Perham over Breckenridge, 80 to 39. Barnesville over Pelican Rapids, 71 to 51, and Staples Motley defeats Frazee, 76 to 72. Other boys hockey, Mayville, uh, Mayville Portland over Bagley, Faustin, 5-2. Two girls hockey games for you. Detroit Lakes, Northern Lakes, they skate to a 5-5 overtime tie. Moorhead defeats Bemidji, 1-0. All that and more on KRXAM.com. Click under sports, and uh, we'll be updating that sports page as the night goes on, and uh, we'll have that updated for you in the morning. And also check out the new Sports Fever column. Uh, Chris has a pretty good one uh, going on. A lot of great uh, talk about the playoffs and uh, some state basketball and all the different levels. And just uh, it's, it's a good one. Check that out. KRXAM.com. Click under sports. Click under sports fever. That's it for me, Tyler. Thank you very much, Bo. Take the night off as uh, you'll be back at it again in the morning. Once again, one final time, the number two ranked War Road Warriors pick up an 8 to nothing win over the Crookston Pirates. We'll be right back here uh, next week. So we have the week off for hockey. Uh, but tomorrow we'll have uh, girls basketball. I'll be all the way out in Virginia as the Crookston girls basketball team. They will be taking on Rock Ridge. We'll have the Riverview Health pregame show. That'll start at 530. It will be... Uh, the tip-off is set for 6 o'clock there, as after that, uh, we will have uh, some more action here on KROX, as it will be boys basketball. They're going to be hosting Climax Fisher. We're going to have that on the YouTube stream, and then it will be on the radio side after the conclusion of girls basketball here. So that's uh, what's to come tomorrow here on KROX. 8 to nothing. the score. War Road wins over Crookston. Uh, thank you for all of our sponsors who helped make this possible. Without our sponsors, we wouldn't be able to do this. So the best way to thank our sponsors is to patronize those sponsors. And if you're unable to patronize them, at the very least, you can stop in and say thank you for being a sponsor of high school athletics here on KROX. Thanks to Coach Hardy for doing uh, pre- and post-game interviews. Thanks to Coach Hardwick from War Road for doing a pre-game interview as well. For Bo Melby, I'm Tyler Herger signing off for the evening.